Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, should I say, on behalf of KWS3 San Dimas and Adelphia Communications. We'd like to bring you this Adelphia High School Game of the Week featuring the host San Dimas Saints, who you see there taking the field. They're hosting the Bonita Bearcats. Saints coming into the game at 0-4. The Bearcats 4-0, and, and it's the 34th annual smudge pot game. A lot of history about to unfold here. And you know what, Cam and Bob, for no matter how these teams are doing throughout the season, you can throw that all out the window just as any huge big rivalry in tonight's smudge pot. We're moments away from getting started. Your thoughts? Well, like you said, you know, first and foremost, the place is packed. I mean, they're lined up 200 yards deep trying to get tickets, and, and which means there's a lot of excitement in this game regardless of the, uh, the records, and people are excited to come out and watch this football game, and what a great tradition it is. Um, you know, what we've seen with San Dimas this year, not only they have a new coaching staff and a new philosophy, and they lost a lot of great talent last year, but they, uh, you know, they also have a lot of injuries. Uh, we can look down the field. We saw Wallace get hurt earlier this season. Santiago, the defensive end, is hurt. So they've had a lot of injuries, a lot of guys down. So they don't even have the talent, you know, a lot of their main talent they depend on. And Benito, let's say this, let's say after losing Mike Williams, is really a surprise. You know, they Pablo Garay's carrying that team, and they're just 4-0 and, and really playing good football. And you know, Cam and Bob stepping into Curtis uh, is Curtis Gold filling the, sh the shoes of Mike Williams from last year. Curtis Gold approaching 1,000 yards with just four games under his belt. He's averaging over 200 yards a game in passing. Bob, your thoughts? Well, like you said earlier, throw out the record tonight because it should be a great game no matter what the records are. So the nice kickoff. Tim Rollins decides to take the touch back there to start the game. So the Saints are going to start on their own 20-yard line. And like we can say, even on the side, you can look at the diminished team over here. The district, you know, a lot of guys are hurting down. Wallace, apparently, he uh, actually broke his leg earlier this year. Not his knee, but he did break his, I believe it was his uh, patellar uh, bone, but he, he did break his leg. And like I say, Joe Santiago's down. And All right, first play, first and 10 from the 20. Pitch play. Nice gain of about eight yards on the right side. That's Roy Curry. Cameron, you mentioned about injuries. Big uh, number 99 for San Dimas. Standing on the sideline, Joe Santiago, 6'5", 255 pounder, and the Saints could definitely use his help tonight, but uh, he's going to have to watch from the sideline. That's well, going to bring up third and one from the 10. Check that from the 30. Great defense there by Benita. And on the tackle for Benita was Eric Campa, 5'9", 165 senior. Yeah, you know, back to Joe, we saw him put on a lot of pressure earlier this year when we saw him play South El Monte. You know, he did a good job and put pressure on the quarterback, and it's a shame for them to lose him. It's going to be second and 12 from the 28. Nice completion to David Clay. So Eric Samples in his first pass attempt of the night. It's a nice game to Flake, they're gonna move the chains. Well, David Flake coming up big there on that reception, gains some yards, gets the first for the Saints. He was a part of the team last year, and I remember calling his name a lot throughout the season. Gonna look at the replay, Bob, why don't you break it down for well, us? That just, just throwing just a little bit behind him, didn't really get to keep his stride going, but still a big play. First and 10 from the 48. A little broken play there, Samples has to turn it up. He'll pick up a couple yards. Player slow to get up for the Saints. It looks like it's number eight, Eric Samples. He took a hard hit. That's not good. Big Jim Clark tending to the uh, down Samples. Clark, a, the trainer for the team here, San Dimas, a longtime uh, member of the program. And Ricky Ochoa, you know, our game we covered earlier this year, he was playing quarterback. Uh, and he's down on the field, suited up, and ready to go. So. You know, it's not like they don't have a guy who doesn't have experience getting underneath the center there. He's just uh, uh, just waiting to see what happens out here. And hopefully Eric Samples is okay as we see him attend to the down player. You know, the cheerleaders tonight, I don't know if this is, I don't remember this happening. They're all wearing football jerseys. <laughs> Showing their support. That's right. While we have this time, I'd like to report that uh, on the lower levels, it was Benita who defeated the freshman San Dimas Saints, as well as on the JV level two. So uh, with a victory tonight, Bo High will sweep at all three levels, and I'm sure the Saints will not be happy about that. 
The samples, maybe this guy hit in the stomach. He's kind of bent over here on the sideline, but I don't think they're too concerned about him. He'll probably come back into the game. Ochoa comes under center, hands the ball off to the fullback for a nice tough run up the middle, a gain of about four or five yards. Cam, what I've seen so far, Sandy is not taking a whole lot of time with the in the huddle when they get up to the line. They're snapping the ball, maybe trying to catch the Bonita Bearcats off guard. What do you think? Yeah, they're definitely pushing the tempo of the game coming out. And, uh, and like you say, they're just getting up to the line of scrimmage, snapping it on the first sound. And, and uh, here Samples comes back into the game after the nice game by Ryan Richard. It's going to be third down and three to go from the 45 of the Bearcats. He rolls out right, looking back across the field. The intended receiver was uh, Derek Marquez. Tough thing to do, run, roll right and throw back to your left, Bob. Yeah, and also when he rolled out, it looked like he had a lot of room to run, but it looks like I guess he wanted his receiver and he threw it uh, just right behind him. But that, that whole side of the sidelines was wide open. He could have ran that. I think that might be a result of the previous play. You know, where he took a pretty good blow. He's probably thinking twice about running right now. <laughs> Let's look at Samples, who's also the kicker. And the Saints off the punt. Fourth and three. Low kick, barely got off. Ochoa covering on the kick. Again, that's Ricky Ochoa covering. He's the uh, backup quarterback. There he is, number seven. While we have this time, I'd like to also mention that uh, first year head coach Bill Zernikow, there you saw him talking to samples on the sideline. He's a protege of Eric Podley, the longtime seven year head coach for the Bearcat football program. He actually was quoted in the newspaper saying he called uh, Podley his father in coaching. So. Curtis Gold drops back, attempts to pass at Pablo Garay. And a pass a little bit low and in front of him. I think Gray might have heard uh, some footsteps. Jason Kilty, number 35 on the coverage. Defensive back, senior 6'1", 175 for the Saints. But back to the uh, Podley Zernico. They had an hour-long conversation on Tuesday that probably added a little bit of spice to this, you know. Uh, there's, there's a lot of love between the two teams, but definitely the rivalry's still here at camp. Oh, definitely. I mean, the energy, this is the best energy we've felt all year, Reg and Bob. Second and ten. Going back to pass. This time he connects with uh, Garay. But the play is well covered by the Saints. I'm going to look Grayson. at a replay. Bob, will, you'll get a chance to break it down for us. Well, one thing is, I remember uh, last couple of years, Mike Williams was a big guy for uh, the Bearcats. And it looks like uh, this year, Gold's going to have to kind of do the same kind of role for the Bearcats. It also looks like they're playing out of the shotgun. This is the first time I, I've seen Benita this year. Have you guys seen Benita play? No, I have no. not had a chance to see the Bearcats play. They've actually alluded our the subject topics on a local sports show too, so I imagine after this we might be talking about them a lot more. Yeah, well, you know, here's a fake the handoff to give it up the middle here. And I believe that's uh, Cody Borquez up the middle. But, you know, they ran out of that shotgun last year too, so it isn't a matter of uh, necessarily of, of doing that because of the talent he has and the players he has, I think that's going to just be the offense for the Bear, for the Bearcats. 8.30 left here in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero the score. Bearcats at the Sandy Miss Saints for the 34th annual Smudge Pot game. So we have Cole Sanders back to punt. Third down and four. Bohai opting to punt. And no one back to receive the kick. So, so San Dimas will get, uh, just uh, settle to let the ball drop. You know, I'm thinking back, Reg and Bob, earlier this year when we saw them, I don't think you were here when we covered it, that South of my game. Were you, Reg? Do they have a problem fielding the ball in that game? you think that's why they don't have a guy back uh, to return that punt? Do you remember, Bob? Because we saw some game they were having trouble. I don't remember having too much trouble, but I think there was a couple times where it was fourth down and uh, about three or four yards, and I don't think San Dimas really wanted to take a chance. They knew they were going to get great field position, uh, whether or not they had a return. They got the ball, looks like, about the 37-yard line right now, so I think they're just kind of happy with where they're going to get it. Just make sure they eliminate all possible mistakes. And there's a look at the sideline where the girl cheerleaders are wearing the uh, Sandy with St. Jersey back to the action on the field, though. Ball carried by Jacob Borzarelli. And that's with the ball. That's going to bring up second and seven. Cam, that was a three-yard gain. 7.45 left here in the first quarter. Still 0-0. Each team has had a possession. Saints on their second.
Looks like a motion. Too many players on the field. We saw the guy running off down here. That must be what it was. And that was Coach Zernico gave him a pretty nasty look, so. Coach Bill Zernico in his first Zernico in his first year at San Dimas. Has coaching experience out at Northview. That's where he coached. He was the defensive coordinator for Coach Podley. San Dimas playing out of the Valley Vista League in the Benita Bearcats out of the Miramonte. They have tough opponents um, when league play starts, including Charter Oak, Los Altos, Wilson. Tough league to be playing in Miramonte. Another whistle down on the floor. We'll see what their uh, see what the call is. San Dimas, uh, along that note, is going to round off the season with Northview, Ganesha, Gavina, Kavina, Pomona, and Baldwin Park this year. Valley Vista League play, and that starts next week. Yep. Saints, for those of you that follow the local high school football scene, last year the league finale when San Dimas defeated Northview over at Kavina District Field week number 10 to take the league championship and finish 5-0 in Valley Vista League. So what a difference a year makes, though. Yeah, Saints I'll you, currently 0-4, Cam. I was just going to say, have a nice gain over the right side there by the Saints. That's Roy Curry. But, uh, you know, as we've said you know, over and over the last two years watching San Dimas, they have just had a plethora of talent. They've really had a lot of good players. And not to say they don't this year, but they've been exceptionally deep. Here, deep. Just a simple pitch out to Curry and just uses speed to get to the sideline, picks up a nice game. It's going to be third down and seven, according to the scoreboard. Ball spotted at the 40 of their own of the Saints. Samples back to pass. And he um, overthrew the intended receiver that time, Derek Marquez. Hey, another thing, guys, notice the scoreboard's working tonight. That'll help us out a little bit. <laughs> they replaced the some of the going. lights. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> and what a packed house. Well, we were at Damien a few weeks ago. The whole thing just shut off completely. That was really tricky, wasn't it? <laughs> Having a little bit of electronic problems over at Damien High School. Yeah. Damien playing at St. John Bosco. It's fourth and seven, Saints punting. Another low kick. It's going to take a San Dimas bounce. Again, Ochoa is going to cover it. Ball going to be spotted down at the 26-yard line, and the Bearcats are going to bring their offensive unit onto the field. Other little game notes to mention, Cam. Uh, we talked a little bit about Pablo Guerre. He leads the team in tackles, Bonita that is, rushing and scoring. So he's getting it done and he's matured. He's put on some weight in the off season and he's contributing huge for Bonita. First and 10 from the 26, their own. Gold looks downfield to Guerre again, little crossing pattern. Same one he threw uh, in the previous series, Bob, just this time he was on the money. He also got great protection by his offensive line on that play. Uh, See a replay like here. Like you said, the crossing pattern just throws it right into his hands and makes up a uh, first down. That's actually, a, it's going to be second and short. And that's a tough thing to defend. You know, if he gets inside position like that, it's a real quick short pattern. And if he gets that pass on the money like that, it's really tough to defend that particular play. Just pecking away like that is nice. A little pop pass and tight end. Nine, nine yard game cam. Uh, gold out of the shotgun, second and one. Ball at the 35 of Bo High. And there's a big pass and completion to number 24, Mike Bentz. And it looked as though that was Tim Rollins went in for the tackle, kind of put his head down and uh, missed. And that was an uh, unfortunate and painful miss there for the Saints. We'll see the replay here, Bob. Well, like you said, the, the missed tackle initially, and then Bentz just uses his speed and runs by the Saints defense. Yeah, you know, the thing about Rollins, you watch that, he, it wasn't as much as he put his head down, he didn't break down to make the tackle. He was running after him. He didn't break down, he just had to do that in the open field. Cam, that was a 76-yard touchdown reception on second and one. We've seen them do this before, too. <laughs> They're going to go for two here. And the plastic complete, he, was he in the end zone is a question. He was. And that's number eight with the reception, and that was Jeff Chavez with the pass completion. 
So Benita trying to take full advantage of every opportunity they have, cash in on the two-point conversion. They have the lead, 8-0 with 5.20 left here to go in the first quarter. And Chavez is just a junior, so I imagine he's the heir apparent to the quarterback position next year over Benita. Here's the shot of the crowd here. Over on the Benita Bearcat side, enjoying that play. So Gold to Bents with a 76-yard touchdown run. Reception, should I say, puts Benita in the end zone first. Now it's time for Benita to kick off with 5.20 left here in the first quarter and up 8-0. And Gray going to kick off for the Bearcats. And he kicks it nice and deep into the end zone again. Roy Curry electing to stay in the end zone for the touchback. Shot oh, it, Curry there. Interesting to note, uh, Pablo Garay doing the kicking for Benita. Yeah. Eric Samples doing the kicking for San Dimas. So. Yeah, and... Uh, and uh, Kickers are hard to come by in the Valley this year, you guys. We saw Sean Bowes do it last year for the Saints. You know, you got to get your best guys out there. I'll tell you one thing about kicking, though, is you can strain your groin. And when you have a skill guy like that, you know, you, you sure hate for him to hurt his groin kicking, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. And that's a heck of a kickoff. You can see why he's back there. First and 10, handoff for San Dimas. Small gain. You know, just to show you how scarce kickers are around the Valley, Charter Oak had to pull one of the girls' volleyball players, Natalie Bailey, who's getting it done. Number 19 for Charter Oak. She's kicking extra points and uh, being used as much as possible over there at Charter Oak High School. It's awesome. Probably got her own locker room too, I bet you. <laughs> Private, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Samples back to pass, has a receiver open, he completes it to Curry. That'll be enough for a first down, guys. That was second and six from the 24 yard line, their own. Saints pull it off, here's the replay, Bob. And right after the run play, they come back with a pretty much conservative pass right back to Curry and he picks up the first down. Folks, just a reminder, this game being brought to you by KWS3, San Dimas Community Television, in conjunction with Adelphia Communications. Week number five of the high school football season, Bearcats at the Saints. 4.25 left in the first quarter, first and 10 from their own 31. Play action, Samples looks downfield and throws a pick. And he's got a little bit of room if he gets out the outside. Eventually, Curry made the tackle. That was Phil Aguayo, Aguayo, excuse me, Aguayo, <laughs> on the interception. So we'll probably see a replay here. Bob, you want to break it down, but. It looked like to me like there's a receiver kind of a short pattern, and there's one in the long, and it just seemed to throw right in between both of them. Neither one really went for the ball. You know, if you know, Samples has a very low de delivery, too, when he passes the football. He, he kind of struggles to get downfield very far. I think that's a pretty big attempt for him. First and 10 from the 44. Gold's going to keep and have some room. He runs into his own player. Oh. Oh, so his man. own player, Mike McDonald, had a nice tackle on his quarterback, Gold, there, helping out the Saints. Let's we'll see the replay here. You know, I can hear that all the way up here, Cam, <laughs> the collision. Gold looks like he's absolutely fine, though. I'm sure somebody's going to get some ribbon during films tomorrow. Four minutes and counting left here in the first quarter. 8-0 Bonita, a 76-yard touchdown reception. Gold to Mike Bentz, gets Bonita on the board. They convert the two points, 8-0 right now. First and 10 from the 31. Whistles and a flag on the play. We're gonna take a look at the last play right now before this uh, flag was thrown. Bob, what do you see? On the keeper with uh, gold right here, it looks like he was just running a little too straight <laughs> up. That's why he took that nice pop right at the end of the run. Well, we had a big hole right there in the middle though, I'll tell you. <laughs> First and 15 now, five yard penalty assessed to the Bearcats ball. It's spotted at their own, at the 36 yard line of the lot Saints. Of, lot of pressure, they flush gold out of the pocket. Throws a pretty ball downfield. 
had his receiver, but unfortunately, Mike Bentz could not uh, make the reception for his uh, second TD. That would have been of the game for him. And yeah. just all in the first quarter. I'll tell you, that was a pretty pass on the run. That was a nice tight spiral. He was right on the money. You couldn't ask for more out of your quarterback. It was a shot of Bentz. And on this last play, you're talking about how he escaped the pressure, and then it looked like right at the end, looked like Benz was looking to his inside shoulder, but you can't really expect too much from the quarterback when he escapes the pressure, and he kind of turned his receiver around. Ooh, God, that's so close. And I Benz bet you. just mad at himself, I'm sure. Yep, probably wants that one back. Go back in, he's got a little pressure again. Being put on him. He throws short, the ball's picked off. The pressure was applied by number 56, Chad Macy. And Brian Metcalf comes up with the interception. So two times in a row, San Dimas will see the replay here. Comes up with the pressure. You were talking about earlier, Cam, when you roll into your left and your right-handed quarterback, it's really hard to get anything on that ball. And Macy got the pressure on him, and he should have just kept that ball and tucked it away. Yeah, or just got rid of it, you know, sooner. He had nothing going. Samples looks to pass in the flat. He's got his receiver unable to break the tackle. That was Eric Campaign on the tackle. And uh, Borzelli with the reception. See, I like this. That ball's off Curry's tip, tips of his fingers, but what do you think, Bob? I, mean, I think this guy, given what Eric Samples has, that's the way you want to attack him. The short, you know, four or five, seven yard passes. You know, you keep him honest, maybe throw one downfield, but really that's where he's gonna be most effective. Yeah, and we saw that on the opening drive when he threw that quick short pass and picked up that big gain. And he had a lot of success, and now he's just doing it again. Gonna be third and nine, ball at the 45 yard line their own for the Saints. 2.45 left in the first quarter. Hand off to Rollins over the left side. He's got a little bit of room. He's going to get the first down. He's going to be right about the marker. I think that's going to give him the first down. They gave him a nice spot. So we'll see Rollins in motion here, Bob. They'll replay it. This time, like I said earlier, they're really mixing up good. They throw the pass, and now they come with the sweep to the, the left side, and they pick up the first down. They're really mixing up pretty good tonight. First and 10 from the 45. Nice Saints. game on first down, go ahead. I'm uh, just gonna say Saints moving the ball steadily, Cam, slowly but surely. Yeah, you know what you mentioned earlier, they really are setting the tempo in this game. I mean, they're getting out of the huddle, they're breaking, they're running the line of scrimmage, they're snapping the ball and they're moving it. So, Saints coming out with a lot of enthusiasm tonight. Second and six from the 42 yard line. Up Benita. Samples rolls right. The receiver got hit. We should see a flag. There you go. Number 32 for the Saints was hit. That's Ryan Richard. I think it was just kind of an unintentional trip there, but nonetheless, it's pass interference. Yeah, it did look like the, the DB on Benita got their feet tangled up, but then right at the end, he kind of shoved him with two hands in the back, and I think that's might have gotten a flag. If he was just throwing his hands up in the air and just kind of tripped him, it might have been incidental. Kind of the way you play basketball, Bob. You, play, you can't stay with him, you just trip him. <laughs> Block stopped at 152 here in the first quarter. Again, the voices you hear of Cameron King, Bobcat Cedar, and I am Reginald Miller. This is the Adelphia High School Game of the Week brought to you by KOS3 San Dimas Community Television in conjunction with KADL, the Adelphia Channel 10. There's a look at the San Dimas offensive huddle. It's going to be first and 10 from the 26 of Bohai. Gives right up the middle of that time. And nothing doing for Ryan Richard. Richard, six foot 210, but he wasn't about to move that pile. There's a good shot of the left tackle, Phil Ramirez. Ramirez, uh, number 72, is being uh, scouted out by a lot of Division I schools. Big Phil is 6'4", 285. The pitch out here to Rollins on the left side. There's a look at number nine for the Saints. 
Tim Rollins, 6'2", 175 pounder. As we wait for the replay here, Bob, what uh, what do you see here? Well, San Dimas yeah. has had success going to the outside, but this time, you know, it just didn't pick up too much on this one. It's going to be third down and nine. Something uh, going on down the field. The officials trying to. Not sure what's going on down there, Cam. Oh, I don't know. I was checking out some spectators. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I know they had the penalty. We'll see. Third and eight. Scoreboard showing. They fake the handoff in the middle. Curry gets the ball over the left side. Curry doing a good job of keeping his feet there. They fake the handoff up the middle to Richard and gave it to Curry. That's Roy Curry, six foot, 185 pound, running back senior for the Saints. Getting San Dimas the first down. This time Curry over the right side, not a whole lot there. It looks like San Dimas is just going to keep going to the sidelines as much as he can. You see the previous play, Curry gets a big gain to the left side, and last play tried to the right side, but didn't really pick up too much. And one thing, too, I'd say we've seen a fair amount of variety from them with pitches and power plays at the middle, and you know, guys coming from the ends and short passes. And Scoreboard showing second and nine. Trying to do a draw play. Not a whole lot there. Orzelli looked up, and I don't think he liked what he saw, so he tried to bounce it outside, but it was well defended that time by the Bearcats. Bearcat defense trying to put a stronghold down there in the... Uh, in the last court. couple of draw plays for San Dimas really haven't got too much because I think that the Benita's on that quick snap now. They're, yeah. they're really not surprising with that quick snap, and the last two draw plays really haven't picked up anything. You guys just look at I'll tell you, up where the draw the play is going to work, though, is, is their way around. Is it, it, if uh, I think with St. Nemes flying up the field like we've seen, we already saw that one quarterback keeper. The, the draw play for uh, Benita will probably be fairly successful. I wonder if we'll see it. That's going to do it at the end of the first quarter. Bearcats, eight, Saints, nothing. Again, that eight-point touchdown was a 76-yard reception. Curtis Gold to Mike Bentz, number 24 of Benita. Two-point conversion was good. So far, it's been Benita after one quarter. Saints, though, doing a good job of kind of uh, adjusting their game, would you say, Cam? They got the ball, and they're uh, looking to put it in the end zone right now. They're going to have great field position to start the second quarter here. Wait, the uh, start of the second quarter. A little note just to mention, Benita coming into this game averaging 30.5 points per game of offense, and they're holding their opponents to 16.5 points per game over the last four weeks. This is second and nine for the Saints. Nice job that time by Curry running over the left side. So Curry gets in for San Dimas. They're going to be have six points. I assume they're going to go for two. Once again, Curry going to the left side of the field and has the success again and gets in for the touchdown. First play of the second quarter. The Saints down by just two. They're going to go for the extra point. They will go for one. The kick was good. That's going to make the score seven for San Dimas and eight for the Benita Bearcats. So, so far, the fans here that have shown up in this Smudgebot game have had a really good game to watch. Cam, if we look down there to the sideline, you mentioned earlier how the cheerleaders are wearing the football jersey. It looks like a whole separate football team in themselves. I think Powder they got puff. more cheerleaders than they have football <laughs> players this year. I don't know. Powder puff action on the sideline there. Well, Saints down by just one here. First play of the second quarter. Gets them on the board for the first time tonight. Bob, can San Dimas pull the upset here tonight? What do they have to do? What do you, Coach Bill Zernikow, what, what do you 
I think what you said earlier is this is a SpongeBob game. You kind of throw out the records, and just with the crowd behind him, I think uh, no matter what the record is, each team's going to have a chance to win this game and just get the ball to your best guy, and that's Curry so far, and see what he can do with it. Saints looking to kick off. 11.53 left here in the second quarter. This time for the short kickoff. Quite a return, CSP's got two guys to beat. And now is Aguayo with a return. Wow, Philip Aguayo. And that is about, where is he, where do you end up guys, in the 40 yard line or so? So about a 50 yard return by Aguayo. Yeah, ball gonna be spotted about the 36 yard line of San Dimas. Here's the replay, Bob breaking And on this down. kickoff, he just kind of runs into a crowd and all of a sudden right there, he just kind of pops out and just breaks it for a huge gain. Like Cam said, about a 50 yard kick return. And one good thing about all, all, all football players in particular running backs is you want to keep your feet moving. You know, you hit some guys, kept his feet moving, next thing you look up and you got nothing but green in front of you. First and 10 from the 36. And that's Perez with the ball. Another first down. About a 16, 17 yard gain. There's a shot of Perez. Perez takes this ball and just gets a nice gain right here. The, the offensive line is really starting to pick it up. So look at the old offensive unit of the Bonita Bearcats. Again, they are averaging 30.5 points per game. We have a new quarterback in the game. I thought we did. That's Cole Sanders out there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Curtis Gold, I apologize. I look like 15. But the pass this time intended uh, for Aguayo. The ball was overthrown. Cam, we have some visitors here. Yeah, we have. Time. We do. We have some young gentlemen here from the, the city of Laverne, the youth football. We're going to try to get these guys on camera and ask them a couple questions later on, but they came out to support the smudge pot game tonight. I'm sure they got a big game tomorrow they can't wait for. So uh, look forward to talking to those guys a little bit. Second and 10 from the 22. Little or no gain on the play for the Bearcats. Saints defense warming up here in the second quarter. Smudge Pot has been at Bonita eight of the last nine years. The one year that in, a, in that nine that uh, Sandy Miss did win, it was a last second field goal, I believe, a couple of years ago, where Sean Bowes, last year's a local sports show player of the year, put it through the uprights in the closing seconds. That was a heck of a game. Very emotional game. Yeah, it really was. Third and seven from the 13. Pitches back, and passes attempted and completed. And then again was Jeff Chavez. So Chavez, the backup quarterback with two completions. We'll see here, Bob, I think we're gonna bring it up again, but. On this one, you see Gold just kind of roll out, give him uh, on the pitch back, and just plenty of time, the, the receiver's wide open in the back of the end zone. And that was Cole Sanders with the reception. So again, it'll see if they're going to go for. They are going to. Gray is going to kick away for the uh, extra point this time. At least we think he is. You know, Cam Cole Sanders was just open in the end zone all alone. Yeah, you know, like we said, said Demas is really coming up the field hard. They've been on that play thinking it was a run, and that really opened up the uh, the end zone there for the TD uh, reception by Cole Sanders. 14-7 the score here. 10-30 left in the second quarter. Well, I'll tell you, you know, if, 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 if you're going to make a mistake, if you're San Dimas, you're 0-4, you're playing against a 4-0 team, if you're going to make a mistake in this game, make it full speed, play hard, and that's what those guys are doing. You know, they're really coming up. They're trying to make plays, so you can't hold them at fault for that. That was just a nice play that time by Benita. Pablo Gray setting that ball up for the Bearcats. 
Is that kick no good? The kick was no good. Wide right. Wide right? Okay. I was looking at the scoreboard. They're lucky they got that insurance uh, two-point conversion earlier. Smudge Pot 2005, 34th annual meeting between these two teams in regards to the Smudge Pot history. And Rollins will take it in the end zone. And I'll tell you guys, you know, we talked about it, but it's just really neat to see that the stands are packed. The infield, if you will, near the snack bar is packed. You know, the, all around the track is just packed. It's just really, it's just really kind of fun to see and, and you need to be a part of tonight. But boy, people are wearing their custom shirts and we heard some guys doing some crazy cheers on the way in here. So it's just, uh, it's a really fun night. You heard the old smudge pot game. Okay, who knows what a smudge pot is? Anybody? S smudge pot. Uh, Keep, kept the uh, orange groves warm That's in right. the winters. It was, you know, one per four trees or something. They used to. Uh, it's like a metal container. They burn oil or diesel fuel in it just to keep frost from hurting the uh, the, the um, citrus crops that we're so n well known for around this area. Of course, at one time we were all. There's a look at there's the smudge our smudge pot. That's not exactly how they looked in the groves, but that's what it looks like oh, now. Oh, it's been uh, dipped in chrome this year. That's right. Well, it's been dipped in chrome a few years back. Of course, this area was just covered with uh, orange groves and various citrus fruits for looks a like very a long time. Looks like a modified Stanley Cup in a way. Very much so. First and 15 yards, long pass play. And the pass is intercepted. And that's Aguayo with the interception. Wow, so Philip Aguayo. You know, I might be, was that, was that Check Vasquez? Check that, Sean Vasquez. Sorry yes. about that. 5'8", 160 pound junior. Okay, we're gonna do, let's do another trivia thing while I run out the field. See, we'll see a replay here, Bob. You break it down. I'm gonna got a trivia question. Well, it looks like San Dimas trying to force this one. Says, I believe Benita had about three guys back in cover, and he just throws in about triple coverage right there and gets picked off. And again, Samples is not designed to throw the ball downfield. But uh, okay, Cal and Stanford have the axe. All you guys, what Diamond Bar and Walnut have the branding iron. There you go, Bob. Doesn't Texas or somebody have something on the college level? First and 10 for Bo High. And that will be a nice run there by uh, Benz. And he'll get the first down. Bob, you got one between schools or something they, they, the rival schools pass back and forth? Uh, I know I know Minnesota plays someone for the Paul Bunyan Axe. I can't, I know it's a Big Ten school. Okay. I know Notre Dame, USC play the, for the Shillelagh. The which, Shillelagh. Which Notre Dame will be taking this year. Why, Bob, you kind of like Notre Dame or what? A little bit. A little bit. It's either Notre Dame or the Raiders. That's all this guy wears. Even his underwear, socks, everything. It's awesome. <laughs> He's a fan. <laughs> Is it true you're getting theater seats for your house just to watch the games? I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> One more bonus and you're there. Back down to the field. First and 10 from the 39-yard line for Benita. We're going to flag on the play. Gold's back to pass. He completes the pass. Saints having trouble taking down that receiver, number six for Benita, Ramon Perez, a 5'7", sophomore cornerback, QB also. They might have a face mask on that, I think. I might have seen Metcalf reach out and grab a hold of something. So we'll see, maybe we'll get a replay here, but. Late 75, Metcalf looks like he's kind of pleading this case here. Nope. Well, it was. It wasn't the snap. That's right. So illegal motion. Of course. What are you thinking, Cam? So this drive by the Bearcats was There was set a up. face mask on that, too. So they're going to call a face mask, I think, as well. Oh, no, maybe not. But then we saw it. Tell me I'm not crazy. Did you see a face mask? <laughs> there was somebody I saw the face mask, but anyway, it is after the after the after the infraction, so it doesn't count. 920 left here in the first half. Second quarter action from San Dimas High School. First and 15 from the 39. Oh, and the Saints almost that ball was bobbled and stayed in the air for quite some time, and uh, Saints almost got there in time to pick it off. Pass intended for one of the Bow High receivers. Bow High, like it. You know, we tried to start calling Glendora High School just Dora, but it didn't fly too well with That's some fans. Yeah. 
Kennedy. Actually, you know, the name was the name is a combination of Glenn and Dora. Actually, I, I wish I What's I the should history? remember my history. I should. You're putting, but uh, I know it's a combination of two names that make Glenn Dora up. Look at the sideline for the Saints. Cheerleaders again donning their favorite player's jersey in an effort to support the San Diego football team here. Second and 15 from the 39. Going back to pass, he looks downfield. Tries to force it, and the ball is almost intercepted. Excuse me, intercepted by Annis. Drew Annis. Clock stopped with 9.07 left here in the second quarter. And you know from the judging by the size of this crowd cam and the history of this game, you would not know that it was an 0-4 team playing a 4-0 team. It may be more crowd than last year, to be honest. They, you know, both teams were doing Look really at the well. End zone. Look at the end zone, Cam. Standing room only as we have a timeout down on the field. A couple more tidbits I'd like to add. Um, you know, we spoke about that uh, Coach Zernico was Coach Podley's defensive coordinator at Northview High from 97 to 98. And he uh, was quoted in the newspaper saying about Podley that Podley was my father in coaching, which I thought you found, you were very fond of that comment, Cam. Yep. I thought it was interesting that the, uh, there was a shot of the crowd there, you can say like a, by the snack bar. Because most of those people came here for reasons other than football, but having a good time on a nice Friday night. But that's interesting. I don't know what his connection was uh, with Podley, but you know he, he played for Karnowski at, uh, at uh, Glendora High School. Zernica, Zernica? Yeah, Zernica. sure. So and then, uh, you know, then he went to Laverne. I believe he went out of state for a while. I want to say like Iowa and came back. But uh, I, I'd be kind of interested to find out the history there. This is, we do have a different quarterback in this time, and that is again Jeff Chavez who does have the pass for the uh, two-point conversion as well as the uh, pre previous touchdown pass. 34th annual smudge pot game. A little bit of trivia. Do you guys know who holds the uh, the edge in the 34th game history? I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab at because I know Bob has no clue, but either do I. I'm going to say, <laughs> well, Bob's got that look on his face. You know what I Plus he went to Charter Oak. That's right. I'm going to say Benita. What is it, Reggie? You know, I'll have to find out at halftime for you. <laughs> Cole Sanders back to kick for the Bearcats. Num number nine, Rollins for the Saints is, oh, they're going to fake the kick. And they got a little bit of running room, but I don't think they're going to quite make it. And big Jonathan Joe on the pursuit. Jonathan Joe, a standout member of the boys basketball team here at San Dimas High School, wearing jersey number one down on the field. John Joe's a 6'4", 195 pounder, put a lot of muscle on the offseason, and he's just a junior. Let's see a replay here. Watching for number one in blue, Jonathan Joe. Closing the gap and just wrapping up that. You know, the short field, I guess, is kind of hard to kick it in the corner. You have a lot of confidence in your defense, so St. Nemus will uh, take the ball over there and be close to first down. And they're going to be right about first down. That might move the chains. Clock stopped at 8.45 of the second quarter. It's going to be first and 10 for the Saints. Ball at their own 40-yard line. Play of the first down. Again, Cam, what I'm seeing out there is San Dimas not, they're, they're right when they get down at the line of scrimmage, they're snapping the ball. They're not giving the Saints a whole lot of time to set up. You know, it'd be neat if you see them go on two and see if they can get the Bear Bearcats to jump offside. Problem with that is you start talking about timing. As an ex-offensive lineman, it takes a lot of discipline and focus to go up there and not jump. Even though the quarterback calls it, you're just in such a habit of firing up the ball. But it'd be interesting to see if they did do that, what would happen? 8.15 and counting here, second quarter, second and eight. Ball's thrown up in the air. <laughs> and who is it again? Jonathan Joe, and I'll tell you what, Cam, Jonathan went up high and grabbed that one. He was covered, it looked like, by number nine of Benita, who he just over, towers over. That's Sean Vasquez, 5'8", 160-pounder. 
And Joe is all of 6'4", 195. We'll see the replay here, Bob. So he just threw the ball straight up, and Joe went up and got it. A lot taller than the defender. Joe got up a little bit slow after that play. Under eight minutes to go here in the first half. Saints moving the ball quite nicely on this possession. We just heard an update, I believe it's seven to six Angels. Game number three of that American League Championship Series. It's the sixth inning. Division Series, yeah. American League, Major League Baseball playoff. Samples will pitch it out to Rollins. He's going to miss it. That was second and seven play got botched. So that time Rollins is, you know, not keeping his eye on the ball, looking up field too fast. And you know, one thing I noticed here tonight, you guys, the uh, field, it's not too cold out here tonight. No. Nice football weather. Bob, we got a replay coming up. Why don't you tell us what went wrong for the Saints? Well, like Cam said, Rollins took his eyes off the ball. But one thing he did is he didn't compound the mistake. He just fell on the ball. He didn't try to pick it up and try to go for a game. Just fall on the ball and just keep, keep possession. And really, we haven't seen that many mistakes tonight, you know, by either team. Sample's got a lot of pressure. Gets a nice block. We're going to flag downfield. Coming back to protect Samples was Chad Macy. Protected him, was a, enabled him to get out of the pocket from the ball down the field. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Saints. Clock stopped at 548 left. That's what the call is. This will be a holding on the defense. That play going to work, uh, penalty going to work in favor of the Saints against Bonita. Shot of Ochoa, as well as Roy Curry there talking to Coach Zernico. Coach Zernico in his first year at the helm here at San Dimas High School, replacing the Roland Deanna, who was the local sports show coach of the year last season. You mentioned how much talent San Dimas has had, Cam. Last year they swept the awards for local sports show. They were the uh, defensive player of the year, Brian Animal Richards. And the Animal, he was, you know, real small linebacker, but for some reason he had more sacks than all these players that were twice his size, you know, and he missed the game. That guy really flew around the field with uh, reckless abandon. Yeah, and Sean Bowes being the all-local sports show player of the year last year. This time they give the Rollins again over the right side. And as you saw, you know, Rollins kind of mishandled that ball as well, but he, he was able to tuck it down and, and uh, get a small gain. Number nine, Rollins with the ball. That carry. San Dimas gets the first down, you guys. <laughs> Folks, stay with us because at halftime, we're going to bring you a show, I believe, down on the field, as well as we're going to be visited by some junior All-American football players, Cam. Yeah, we'll get them. Curry with the ball. Yeah, we're going to get a chance to talk to those guys. We'll figure out when. Get those little munchkins up here, find out what's going on in the lives of eight-year-olds and seven-year-olds. <laughs> How things are going at the lower ranks. We're going to get a replay. Bobcat Cedar, break it down well, for us. Once again, Curry picks up a huge play for the Saints. And we were talking about earlier how the, the draw plays up the middle aren't getting much yardage, but it's really keeping the defense honest because you can't really just give the ball to Curry every single time. So they're kind of just throwing those right up the middle, and then, then you kind of go back to Curry, and he picks up the first down. Second and three. Nice, rough, aggressive running there by Ryan Richard. Pounding his way down to the goal line. Number 32 for the Saints with that huge gain, getting down in the red zone of Bonita. Here's the replay, Bob, what do you see? Well, this time we see the play right up the middle, but Benita doesn't wrap up, and they miss the two tackles right there, and he comes up with a big play. Now first and goal. Flay carrying the ball, but as we often see, you know, he's really had his pad level up very high and wasn't able to punch it into the end zone. Let's take a look at the replay here in just a second. There's David Flagg. Five, ten left here in the first half. Saints down by a touchdown. Second and one, and it's uh, punched in the end zone. So Ryan Richard with a three-yard touchdown scamper.
Here's the replay, Bob, what do you see? Well, Richard, just, once again, just breaks through a couple of tackles, goes right through the middle. You see that time as he hit the line of scrimmage, he got his pad level down and pushed it right through. Kick is up, and it's good. Gentlemen, we have a tie ball game. We shot a samples running off the field. And a fan loving it here in San Dimas tonight. Well, who would have predicted this with almost one entire half of football gone, a 14 to 14 tie. Bob, did you have any indication? Was there anything uh, that- Be honest, Bob. We know how you do this after the fact. Well, like I said earlier, throw out the records, man. This is <laughs> gonna be close, man. I called it early. Again, the uh, third team here tonight. <laughs> St. Cheerleaders. Five minutes left here in the first half. Again, folks, at halftime, we're going to bring you the Sandy Miss Saint marching band down on the field, and then that's going to be followed up by an exclusive interview with uh, some Pop Warner Junior All-American football players. Cam uh, will be headlining that one. See Can't what's going wait. on at the lower levels. Kickoff here. Tell you what, here's a kickoff. Oh, some heavy hits there in the in the uh, some missed tackles. Finally, Flag was able to take down the runner for Benita. Sean Vasquez making some uh, headway there for the Bearcats. Was that Sean Vasquez? Wyo, I believe. Wyo, you got it. Number eight. Sorry, Phil. Yeah, he wants his props for that run right there. <laughs> First and 10 from the 37 yard line, their own, Bonita High School. The give is right off the right tackle here and a good run for a first down. And it looked, you know, they're doing that play action again where they had the receiver come across like they're gonna hand it off to uh, Cole Sanders. But they gave the ball to Garay for the nice game for the first down. So Zandivas just uh, trying not to give up some points here before half. So Zandivas will call timeout to talk it over. Clock stopped at 4.44 here of the first half. 14-14, we have ourselves a ball game, gentlemen. Recap, a couple of scores. Starting from the top, 540 in the first quarter, a 76-yard touchdown pass. Gold to Bentz, put Benita on the high, two point, Benita on the board first. Two point conversion made it eight nothing. And then the first play of the second quarter, 13-yard touchdown run by Curry of San Dimas. PAT was good, made it eight to seven. Saints down by one. Then 10.30 of the second quarter, number 15, Cole Sanders with a 13-yard touchdown pass. PAT was no good, making it 14-7, Benita. And then most recently, Ryan Richard, number 32, of San Dimas with a three-yard touchdown run, tying it up with the PAT good. There's the last play right there, Bob. And is that Pablo Garay? Who was that? I thought that was Garay. I believe so. Number 26, Pablo Garay. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 43 of San Dimas. And there's some uh, miscommunication down on the field. Whistles being blown after coming out of that timeout. Okay, it's going to go against Benita. So a little bit of help there for uh, San Dimas on the offsides. Folks, we are in week number five of the high school football season. League play starts next week for a lot of these teams. Bonita, though, will be facing Walnut, hosting Walnut. That's going to be a big game, big test for the Bearcats. First and 10 from the 43 for Bo High. Gold out of the shotgun. This time they give it to Sanders. They faked it last time, but St. Dimas doing a decent job of covering it. Bob, here's a look at the replay. You notice how much field he had. Yeah, and you see the San Dimas defenders come and just close that sidelines right off. 
Hey, that's off to the defense of the San Diego State. Cam, you've got to be impressed a little bit tonight. You know, I am. I, uh, you know, it's just neat to see these guys keep the, keep their uh, heads up and come out and playing hard, even though they've had a rough start to the season. You wouldn't know it by watching if they were 0-4, I'll tell you that much. Four minutes in counting here. Second and six from the 38. Bearcats give it to Garay up the middle. Cam here in the bleachers right in front of us. They brought the whole team out, the Junior All-American kids did. They got the team, they got their jerseys, they're up cheering. I bet some of these kids probably never been to a high school football game. It's kind of neat for them to see it. It gives them a chance to see what they're going to hopefully someday be able to come out and do. We'll see the replay here of the last play. Nice wrap-up tackle by Flag there. Bob, it's something you want to see if you're the coach. Defensive coordinator. 3.30 left, first and 10 for Bonita at the 32 of San Dimas. Pass is thrown and complete to McDonald. So gold to McDonald for the pass completion. Now we'll give him a first down. We're going to see the replay here in a second. Well, on this play, McDonald just kind of goes right over the middle and just kind of squats right in the middle of the field and gives his quarterback a huge target to hit. And he just falls down for the first down. There's Flag in again on the tackle. 3.20 left here in the second quarter. First half action. It's going to be first and 10. For Benita at the 20 of San Dimas. It was a nice gain that time by Benita, and that was Cody Borquez with the ball up the middle. You know, another thing I'm, I noticed for you know, San Dimas, when they come out of the huddle on offense, they quickly snap the ball and try to catch the Benita Bearcat defense off guard. What I'm seeing from Benita now is they have an arsenal of players. They're not just using, you know, Pablo Garay, granted, is the go-to guy, but they have a balanced attack, and they're using quite a bit of receivers and stuff. On the season, Cam, they have six different receivers that have caught touchdowns four games into the season. Pretty impressive. Second and one from the 11. This time they get the ball to the right side, a few broken tackles. And that was number 21, Eric Campa with the run. So similar play, just going right and left with it, using different guys. Well, we have a moment too, Cam. I'd like to mention here in week five, you know, we got the Bearcats at San Dimas here, bringing you that game. But other games going across town. Charter Oak is at Claremont. Damien's at St. John Bosco. Arcadia is at Glendora at Benita High. And Lutheran's at Upland Christian tonight. There's a you want to explain that Glendora at Benita High, but that's because Glendora does not have a home field. They generally have been playing their home games here. But tonight, since Benita's here and St. Davis is here, they're over there at Benita. First and goal. Again, Glendora doesn't have a field on their, their campus. They play over at Citrus College. And they're getting a new field uh, put in there, an artificial turf. But yeah, I was talking to Coach Pascarella about that, and he said there was um, a bond measure that passed and allowed Citrus to do some upgrades to the stadium. So uh, they haven't ruled out not returning to Citrus College this, uh, this season. The second goal a quarterback keeper and it's a touchdown so the last thing Sam Dimas wanted to do was come out and give them that seven points before half but it happened by a nice drive by Benita a shot of the Benita fans who was that Cam did we see who that was uh, it was just a quarterback keeper I believe and that was should have been uh, Curtis Cole with the ball I think I, it was, I saw number six. Maybe we'll get a replay here, which is it would be a backup uh, Ramon Perez. Pablo Garay lining up for that extra point. He's the kicker for the Bearcats. Kicks up and good. Let me score 21-14. This is a shot of Garay. If we get a replay here, maybe of the touchdown uh, play.
guys in the truck going to bring that up for us here. Look at the standing room only crowd around the perimeter of the field, though, right there on that shot. Nothing fancy as the quarterback keeper, and that was Gold that scored. Curtis Gold, a 6'2", 180-pound senior. Nice push by the offensive line. Filling in the shoes of Mike Williams quite nicely this year for the Bearcats. You know where Mike ended up, uh, you guys? I'll, I'll try to find out for I you, Cam. I want to say Mount Sac, but I'm not sure. I'll find out for you at halftime. I'm going to find out who's the lead, leader of the 34th uh, game right. scrunch pot series. 120 left in the first half. Bonita going to kick off here. They're up 21-14. San Dimas keeping it close, though. And again, the kick will go into the end zone. Rollins will just get the touchback. So with 119 here to go in the half. We think, Bob, they're going to put some air into the ball. They're going to go in content with the uh, seven-point deficit, that them being San Dimas. I think you might see uh, Curry with a couple of sweet plays, and they get something big, then they might try to go for it. But if, if nothing happens, I think they might just kind of sit on the ball and take it in the halftime. First and 10 from the 20. Flag on the play. We'll see what it's, uh, what's going to be called. A lot of bugs in the air tonight. It is a great night for football, nevertheless. So a little bit cold, a little bit cold usually here at San Dimas. We got that uh, winds coming off of Pudding Stone Lake over the hill there across the freeway. Usually chills us down. Bugs like football too, I guess, huh, Reg? <laughs> Actually, there's some spiders up here. The hazards of calling high school football, I guess. Right there. Check it out, Bob's do. <laughs> <laughs> we got some flags Another flag. In the play. What's going on here? Sloppy football before the half. Who's it going to be called on? And it looks like it's going to be on the Saints again. So they're going to be pinned down there. Their backs in the end zone. That's not a situation you want to be in right now with the uh, Bearcat defense starting to warm up here, Bob. Hey, guys. Go ahead, Bob. I was just going to say, with, with that penalty right there, it looks like, you know, they probably won't try to do anything fancy or anything. They might just sit on this right now. 120 left in the first half, 118 specifically. Pass is complete in the flat, not a big gain. That's Ricky Ochoa, the quarterback, also with the reception. Let's see replay. Hey guys, I got a question for you. Tomorrow's a big day for me, being a Cal alum and former player. You know, we're playing UCLA at the Rose Bowl. Any predictions? Watch it. Oh, Cal all the way. Thanks, Reg. Bob? I don't know. It should definitely be a shootout, but I don't know. UCLA's offense looking pretty good right now. Want to put some money on it, Bob? Or we don't bet money. How about uh, maybe a burger? You uh, down? I'm down. And let's see if that reception is going to be ruled points? out of bounds real quick, gentlemen. Yeah, you have three. All right, I'll take them. Boy, gonna, can't wait. Watch the replay on this. I think they're going to rule that the uh, interception took place out of bounds, but he took out one of the Saint players on the sideline there. I'll you know your it. luck's bad when you're standing on the sideline and you get taken out. How do you? <laughs> you got to be paying attention at all times when you're down there, man. That's a five-yard rule. Good point. 46 seconds left in the first half. Heavy hit going on down on the field. Stop made that time by Kevin Paulson. There's a replay right here. Timeout down on the field. Now, uh, again, folks, Bonita coming into this contest 4-0. They defeated in week number one Cypress at home 28-21. They defeated South Almonte at home 24-14. Week number three, they defeated the Pomona Red Devils 39-28. And then last year they traveled, last week they traveled to Whittier and defeated the Poets 35-3. For San Dimas, it's not been as bright. They've hosted South El Monte and lost 49-19 to open the season. Week number two, they were at Apple Valley. They lost that 36-20. They traveled to Rialto to face Carter and lost 47-14 in week number three. And then last week at Ontario Christian, the Saints lost 
41-21, which was a lot closer than the game when they played on Terra Christian the year before here, Cam, when almost 100 points was uh, was uh, racked up between the two teams. Yeah, San Diego, you know, being on that's the, a game uh, I remember end. for a while. There was a wow. lot of offense in that game, unexpected by us. I think Rich Owens just running wild for the Ontario Christian Golden Knights. I'd be interested to see where he's playing this season. 28 seconds left here in the first half. It's going to be fourth down and about 16, 18 yards to go for San Dimas, and it looks like they're going to punt. Back to receive for the Bearcats. Looks like that's number eight. Knuckleball. Ball. And the ball's not even going to make it near him. We'll take a San Dimas bounce and end up close to midfield. Be about the 47, 48 yard line of San Dimas. Well, clock running down, but Benita's going to get a couple of shots here. We'll see <coughs> what they do. Will Coach Podley shoot for the end zone? He's got the arm of Curtis Gold on his side. What do you think, Bob? Well, I think anytime you're on, you know, your opponent's side of the uh, the field, you, you might as well go for it. You throw a pick all the way downfield, it's just like punting the ball away anyway. There's, there's almost no chance he's really going to take it all the way back because your quarterback knows he's kind of the safety once he lets it go downfield. So you might want to take a shot at it. 14 seconds left in the first half. Going to be first and 10. Ball spotted at about the 47-yard uh, line of San Dimas. Shotgun formation for Benita. Gold being flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run to the far side of the field. Before being put out of bounds, looks like at about the 35-yard line. Five seconds left. Can Benita, is that enough time for Benita to make a strike into the end zone, Cam? If they you're got, Coach Podley, what do you do? They got one shot, I'd take it. Line him up, run him down the field, throw it up, see who comes up with it. Folks, this game being brought to you live on KOS 3, San Dimas Community Television. And on Channel 10, KADL, Director Ken Pucci, Richard McManus on loan from Glendora Access Television up in the... And there it is, Cam. Ball's thrown up a little bit overthrow, but he had his guy. He was open. Ochoa getting beaten over there by uh, Phil Paguayo. Well, that's going to do it for the half, Cam. We'll come back. Folks, stay with us as we watch this replay, Bob, quickly. Well, like you said, Ochoa was beaten. Benita had their man downfield just overthrown by about five yards. Curtis Gold averaging 200 yards per game or more throughout four games. First four games of the season, he's on track to hit 1,000 this game, but only time will tell. 21-14 at the half, folks. There is one more play it's looking like There's down the field. There's a flag on the play, so they're deciding, uh, trying to decide what they're going to do here. What happens here, Cam? Well, it just depends when the play, when the foul uh, occurred. So they'll probably put one tick back on the clock. Is that what you'd say? Well, it looks like it. They're going to move the ball. Penalty going against the Saints. And a big penalty at that. I didn't see the call. That's a 15-yard penalty. And, you know, this play is important, Cam, because... Uh, so it, they're going to call a personal foul. It was helped out by a gentleman here in the stands uh, roughing the passer. Yeah, you know, should Benita now get into the end zone, this is going to really hamper the Saints' progress. They are in this game right now, down by just a touchdown. You know, if you're uh, San Dimas, you don't want to be down by two touchdowns going into the, the second half of action. So they're going to go for the field goal. Pablo Gray is going to come out and try to get three points. They have a timeout on the field by San Dimas. So costly penalty by a game that really hasn't been riddled with too many penalties up to this point. And Gray has shown that he has a very strong leg, so I don't think the distance is going to be an issue for him. Bob, is Pablo going to put this through the uprights? Well, we saw earlier. It was kind of funny they went for that two-point conversion earlier on. Maybe he thought they had some trouble, but he does seem to have the leg. I don't know if they just, they're just they expecting to score a lot. That's why they kind of went for that two-point conversion. But he does seem to have the leg. So, And we saw the extra point was wide right. So, There's a look at the San Dimas defense. They are uh, allowing 43.2 points per game. That is a lot, Cam. They have their work cut out for them today, and they're uh, 
it's actually right on. And they've given up 21 points here in the half. Double that to 42 points and right on their average. So, Again, to their defense, they have had a lot of injuries this year. Yeah, you know, and also San Dimas' record of their opponents thus far in the season is 12-4. and four, So a lot of those teams they've played, they've lost to, have are really good teams at really successful programs. So. The kick is up. It's going to be long enough. And it's good. So the penalty enables Benita to get three more points on the board before half. 35-yard field goal, would we say? 45-yard. That was Yeah, 45 yards. 45-yard field goal by Pablo Garay. So um, that quiets the crowd here a little bit on the San Dimas side. 10-point lead now for Benita as they head to the locker room. So, should have been 21-14, but a personal foul on the Saints give the Bearcats an opportunity as they kick one through the uprights, courtesy of Pablo Guerrero, 45-yard field goal, huge, huge field goal. That lead now to 10 for Cameron King of Bobcat Cedar. I am Reginald Miller, and uh, we're high above in the home bleachers here at San Dimas. Stay tuned for the game for the uh, band making their way down on the field of the San Dimas Saints, and then we're going to have an interview with the Glendora All Amer Junior Laverne. All American, Laverne, Laverne All American, Laverne San Dimas actually. So it's perfect for tonight's game. So stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks, to the second half action. San Dimas looking to kick off here. They are down by ten, and it's quite a assortment of halftime festivities going on here at San Dimas High School. Here's the kickoff. Back receives, looks like number eight for Benita. He's cutting up field, looking to gain some ground and does. That was Philip Aguayo on the receiving end of that kickoff. And we're underway here in the uh, second half. Again, folks, Cameron King, Bobcat Cedar, and Reginald Miller bringing you the telecast tonight along with San Dimas K West 3 Community Television and KADL Adelphia Channel 10. This is week number five and the 34th annual Smudge Pot Extravaganza. First and 10 from the 23 yard line. For Benita, Curtis Gold out of the shotgun. Gray with the ball up the middle. A short gain. We'll see how they come out here at the second half. There was a, obviously that uh, field goal took some energy out of the, uh, out of the San Dimas Saints, but they're still right in this ball game. They've been playing really well tonight. That's going to bring up Cam second and seven from their own 32. Again, quarterback Curtis Gold in shotgun formation for Bow High. Yeah, have offsides. I don't know. It looked like it was on the offense or defense. It looked like the defense to me in Croce. You see the receiver in motion on Benita. I think the defense might have jumped when it saw the, the motion man kind of start moving. Yeah, it was encroachment on the defense. <laughs> Clock stopped at 11-13 here in the second quarter. San Dimas definitely in this ball game, though, Cameron. Yes, they are, and I just hope that they are able to keep their heads up because they are in the ball game, and that was unfortunate that that penalty put them down by 10 as opposed to 7, but, uh, you know, they're playing really good football tonight. Like I said, it's a big game, so I'm sure these guys will fight till the very end. Second and two. <coughs> Gray with the reception. Wow, what a spin move. We have a flag down. It might be a late hit. But Gray just giving a stiff arm out there in the flat. St. Player slow to get up. He's limping off the uh, field. That's number nine, Tim Rollins. And here's a replay, Bob. What do you see? A nice spin move right here. And he just oh. breaks the tackle and picks up about six, seven more yards. And they're going to attack on the penalty. That's a 15 yard penalty. So another, another penalty putting the hurt right now to San Dimas. We saw them get a penalty assessed right before the half and it allowed Benita to bring their offensive unit back on the field and kick a 35 yard touchdown. 35 yard field goal to uh, 
increase the lead to 10 when the half actually should have been over. First and 10 for Benita. Wow. See what they're going to rule. Ball was down, I believe. See if we can't get a replay on that play. Looks like he's trying to head up field a little too quick. That's a dangerous pass, so almost like a lateral right there, and it could have been live. Ten thirty-five, showing on the clock. Third quarter. Second and ten from the San Dimas thirty-nine. Curtis Gold for Benita out of the shotgun. He's got four receivers on the top of the field there, and yet he looks downfield where he's got an ISO one-on-one. -on -one. So they put four guys on the top to isolate. Uh, Mike Bentz on the bottom of the field here, and they went to him, and I think he had to step on him, Bob. The pass was just not on the money. Yeah, once again, you saw Bentz wide open. He's kind of looking to his inside shoulder and throwing it to the outside and about five yards deep. Gold kind of just airing that ball out there, Cam, and, uh, you know, a little bit more precision. Could have two more touchdowns on the night already. There's a replay up here, Bob. The but like you said, they put all the receivers at the top and kind of isolate them. So it looks like Gold was just trying to throw it up to his receiver anyway. Third and ten there. So nice pass completion. It looks like it was for. They got the. Or they got the first down. They're going to move the chains. So with the help of that penalty, that 15-yard penalty, Benita is on the move. Ball going to be spotted down at the San Dimas 25-yard line. It's going to be first and 10, Bearcats. 10-15 left here in the third quarter. Gold out of the shotgun. Give us the gray right up the middle. He wow. runs over a defender from San Dimas. And I hate to call his name, but I believe that was David Flagg that just was run over by Garay. Garay running low and hard. Leg looked like he was kind of caught on his heels to his defense, but uh, couldn't make the tackle on the initial contact. Here is the replay. Just running straight north and south right there and just kind of lowers his shoulder and just carries people. That's good enough for a first down from the 14-yard line. Gold road, goes steps to the right. He'll keep the ball. I think that was designed for him to keep it. He went over the right tackle and had a nice uh, gain of about three yards. It's going to be second and five. Now let's know too. I just you know Curtis Gold is 6'2", 180. and we've seen a lot of small quarterbacks this year. But he's a good-sized quarterback and looks like a pretty good darn athlete. Chavez, uh, the backup, is 6'2", 175. So. Benita blessed with a little bit of talent there at the quarterback position. Second and five, Cam from the nine. On the end around, that's Aguayo who slipped and fell. A shot of Aguayo, number eight, going back to the huddle. Continues to take away, 9.45 and counting. It's going to be second and 10. Second and goal. It's a big third down play here. Third down, check that. Flush out of the pocket is gold. He looks downfield, he has no receiver. Tries to force it in the corner of the end zone, but was unable to. Good defense by the Saints. San Dimas hats off to their defense right now as uh, Bonita driving into the red zone down there, unable to cash in here on third down. They're going to probably bring out the field goal unit on fourth and goal. Yep, Garay is coming out on the field, so it appears as though they're going to kick the field goal. And they will, if they convert it, they will be going up by 13. So Garay, not your typical place kicker. He's got his hand pads on and all stocky, but he's going to boot this one and try to get it up through the uprights. Kick is up. It looks strong enough, and it's good. About a 25-yarder, can we call it, Cam? 
That would be a 35 yarder, I believe. Nice. So Garay with a 45 yard field goal to end the first half, and he gets the first points of the second half on the board with a 35 yard field goal for Benita. So San Dimas to bring the crowd back in this game. They need to get a little something going this time on offense because uh, I don't think they can afford to let Benita you know, get, get away from any further than they already are. Any thoughts or comments here, guys? Bob? Uh, the thing for Benita's kicker right now, he's been getting the ball in the end zone every time, so really there's no chance for Curry. Because we saw last game, every time Curry gets it, he kind of fakes that little end around. And if Rollins gets it, he gives it to Curry on that little turnaround sweep. So. But Benita's had a good job getting in the end zone on every kickoff. Really no chance for San Dimas to get anything going. Yeah, Curry is a transfer from Don Lugo High School. New to the Saints team this year. And here's Benito to kick off. This one's close. He's going to be able to turn it. They fake the handoff. Curry keeps it. And he coughs the ball up. I think the Saints got it back. <coughs> but as you can see, he was holding that ball out there. He wasn't protecting it. And uh, that's very dangerous, obviously. They're lucky to come back up with that football. Had they turned it over, this game might almost be over with. Yeah, Cam, it looked like he might have been attempting to switch hands. Let's see the replay, Bob, if you can spot it. Holding it on the outside and then running into one of his own players. Maybe he's maybe trying to change hands with the ball or something yeah, there, Bob. Yeah, initially it looks like he covered up with both hands, and then when he looked upfield to kind of look for a lane, he just kind of... Maybe he's doing the old cow play. He's going to lateral it, you know? Hey, <laughs> worked once. Little interesting note to mention. Me and Bobcat were sitting uh, here, Cam, while you were doing your halftime show, uh, and we figured out that four, Benita, four separate Benita players had gotten into the end zone. Pablo Garay with a 45-yard field goal to close out the first half. Curtis Gold prior to that had a quarterback keeper. Sanders with a 13-yard TD run before that. And prior to that, Mike Bentz to open up with the first yard, first 76-yard touchdown reception. So back down to the field, though. Second and four for Benita. For San Dimas, check that. San Dimas just kind of pounding the ball out here, getting a couple nice runs back to back. Look behind the blocking. Again, a big Phil Ramirez. We saw the sidelines there, and we get back out onto the field. We see an injury. It looks like Curry's come out the field, kind of flipping his foot here. He's kind of limping a bit. I'm sure he'll get back out there, but Saints don't need him hurt. And look at this run right here. We're gonna have a wide open with nobody around. We'll see if he can rumble. Look at number 24. Into the end zone. The wow. So just like that, Ryan Richard runs into the pile and somehow stays on his feet, bounces off a few guys, and ends up in the end zone. And let me tell you, we'll see the replay here. He looked like the bus right there. Little Jerome Bettis is going down the field with guys in pursuit, but there he is. So he's almost dragging a wheel there, but look at the anchor. You see the anchor tied right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's what San Dimas needed, right? Just like that, you know, they if they had turned that ball over on the kick on that return, they could have, you know, almost lost the game. Now it's like that. They score a touchdown. Now they're gonna be down by potentially by six points or one score. 74 yard touchdown run by Richard. PAT the kick good. Is and that samples with the PAT. So, games like this, Bob, just like you said, you can never tell what's going to happen, buddy. Yeah, and you said, uh, as a running back, you want to keep those legs pumping. You can see it just dragging players along, and he broke free. And one thing you see that's a little impressive, the umpire was kind of stride for stride with him going all the way to the end zone. He kind of kept up with Richard. <laughs> Hats off to the umpire. Here's a slow-mo. As you can see him shoot the gap there, Cam, what you were talking about, just kind of emerged away from the defenders. Last-ditch effort by uh, one of the Bearcats before he breaks into the open. There's the umpire. <laughs> hey, Richard's six foot two ten, so he's a load, you know. That's a fine piece of running by him. Oh, 
74-yard touchdown run. San Diego's back in this ball game, down by just six points. Pablo Garay field goals the difference. Samples gets a low kick downfield. It's returned by Aguayo. He picks his way upfield. He's got a little daylight. Exactly what the Saints can't afford to have. And Samples, the quarterback kicker, eventually takes him out on their own 41-yard line. Slow and deliberate running by Philip Aguayo as he waited for his blockers. So here's the replay, Bob. Break it down. Well, we've seen this about two, three times. Like you said, it's just delivery. just kind of just picking his way through, and he's just breaking arm tackles. That's like the third run he's had like that. And San Dimas is just not wrapping up. And, you know, that's been a part of the football games that we've uh, been absent in the past over the last few seasons. We've been kind of a little bit disappointed with players not being having the opportunity to return balls, you know, with the emergence of good kickers that kick it in the uh, end zone. Back to the field, though. That time Garay goes upfield for about a seven-yard gain. Nice gain on first down. You know, Cam, am I wrong? Is that something we wanted to see more of? We've seen two today, two returns. Well, it's always exciting to see a guy return a kick like that. At the same time, you know what? Whenever you watch these games, you get kind of pensive, like you're just afraid that they're going to break down like that. You always feel like that potential is there. And, you know, it doesn't take much if a guy collapses, doesn't maintain his lane. As you go down on special teams, everybody has a lane. They're supposed to maintain that and protect the whole field to fan out. If you give up a lane, just like if you give outside contain up on a, a, as a defensive end, you're going to have trouble, and, and that was a, a, a case of that right there. Aguayo with the ball in the end of the round. He's got room this time as well. He will have the first down. So Aguayo with about a 12-yard pickup will have the first down. And just like that, Benita kind of quiets the crowd again here on the San Dimas side. Here's a replay, Bob. Well, he comes around. You see he kind of has a little convoy of blockers in front of him, and he just picks up a huge gain. So 5.51 here to go in the third quarter. The score is 27-21. Benita's in, in, in the lead, but San Dimas with that big run play kind of brought the energy back in the crowd and getting back in the game, and now Benita's putting together a pretty effective uh, drive. And as we know, too, they really need to hold them here because if they get another 10 yards or so, they're well within Garay's uh, field goal range. Pablo Garay being the difference in the game right now. Give up the middle. That was first and 10 from the 33. You know, and it looks as though, you know, San Dimas might be a little bit small, and I think they're getting a little bit tired. It looks like they're starting to kind of hang on and just get drugged down the field here. So Benita's just going to pound this ball out, I imagine, and set up a pass. You know, camp for San Dimas, number 32, Ryan Richard, we talked about earlier. He's uh, scored, put it in the end zone twice for the Saints tonight. A three-yard TD run in the first half, and then a 74-yard touchdown run more recently that we just saw here in the second half to uh, bring the current score. Second and four for the Benita Bearcats. The crossing pattern there, the intended the receiver for Benita, Eric Campa. So we got a big third down play here, guys. You got third and about maybe a short five. About four yards to go. We'll see the replay here. It looks like the receiver really didn't get his head around. It's kind of throwing a little bit behind him, but it, he really didn't get his head around and kind of give his quarterback anything to throw at. And Gold just trying to force it in there. Thread the needle, like they say. So five receivers out. We'll see what Gold can do here. Third and four, the scoreboard showing. A lot of pressure by the Saints. Great job by the Saint defense. Look like big number 75 for San Dimas. Again, that's Brian Metcalf with the stop. So a good job there. I think on fourth down, I bet they're going to go for it because I think they're out of field goal range. We've seen them go for it again before in, in this situation. So the same defense will be tested again. Now we have a timeout on the field. I'd just like to quickly mention, Cam, I glanced over to my left here. And if we could get a shot of this, Rich, Rich, if we get a shot of this, the uh, crowd over in the uh, north side of the stadium is just absolutely uh, filled, standing room only. How many people, you want to guesstimate, Cam, how many people are here? I on? have no idea, but I'll tell you something, there's a shot of the crowd. When we were coming in, we, I got here late. It was like five minutes of game time, and I guarantee you there were probably 300 people that didn't see the start of the game because they were standing in line to get their ticket. 
There's a look at the crowd. Bob, you know what you commented? It's like the Little League World Series yeah. here with people up on the uh, hill there. Just yeah. trying to get a view of the field. Not only are the San Dimas fans here, but Benita really uh, traveled a lot of fans, and they're just really crowding over on the, the side of the hill by the freeway. You know what? Did anybody buy 50-50 tickets? Because I bet it's going to be good tonight. No? Up tight wads. <laughs> I always got to buy the ticket. Except for Bob. He did buy programs tonight. Usually he brings that $100 bill he has. I can he, get you a seat cushion at it. San Dimas High School seat That's cushion. That's not the camp. same. I want the big bucks. I got a baby <laughs> on the way. <laughs> Clock stopped at 4.09 left here in the third quarter. So here we go. Big play here, guys. Fourth down. And four. It looks like they're going to go for it. Coach Podley relying. Has Quarterback keeper. I knew it. Saints get up there. They stopped them. And that was Flag, the gentleman we mentioned earlier, who uh, helped make the stop. We had a bunch of Saints in there. It was good defense by San Dimas. <laughs> Here's a replay. First to make contact was Gomez, Luis Gomez. And you know, defenses can turn games around and change momentum. That was a big stop by the San Dimas defense. So it's up to the offense now to get something going. Saints will take the ball over at the 27 yard line. It'll be first and 10. This time, the give. It's about an eight yard game. We saw a nice athletic flip, if you will, by Ryan Richard getting upended. Well, Ryan Richard, we already know, has that breakaway speed. And if you're the Benita Hive Cat defense, you definitely want him to be on your radar. They got to keep an eye on him. He recently broke a 74 yard touchdown. There's a look at Richard as he cuts it up. A little flip this at the end of the Curry play. Curry has the ball. He'll have the first down. You know, speaking of, of being upended like that, we, again, we, we, we covered a game earlier this year. Bobby and I did that uh, uh, Justin Wallace went for an extra yard, got up in it on his own, I don't know, was 30, 40 yard line around the sideline, and he ended up breaking his leg. It's always scary to see a guy get up in it like that up in the air, but Richards uh, got a little bit more meat to him, I think, than Wallace, so the big load. First and 10 from the 38. Pitch to Curry, nothing doing. So now this Bonita High School defense starting to answer back. Bo High having a stance. And that was number 30. Cody Borquez for Benito in on the stop. There's a shot of Borquez. He's a little bit sore. There's the 50-50 real back. quick cam right down there. They're selling him. Who's reaching into their pockets first? I'm out of cash, gentlemen. I, I can't bring out the old West money clip. <laughs> I didn't have a very good day at golf today. I don't have much money left. <laughs> So third and nine from the 39 yard line. So the Saints really desperately want this first down. They give to Curry, he's got some room over the left side. He's got a little blocking out front. Woo, was he met there. I believe that was number 12 for Benita McDonald in to make the contact. Looks like this one might come back. There's a replay. What do you see there, Bob? I think there was a holding on that play. I think I saw a flag kind of come in there, and he did get leveled at the end. That's going to go against the Bearcats. So San Dimas getting a nice break here. Here's the hit in slow motion. Wow. And I might be wrong. That I want to give him credit. That could be a, could have been John Rafe. Hit on the stop there. Saints moving the ball upfield slowly but surely. Cam. Approaching the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Richards with the ball. He'll ramble for about six. Richard seems to be the go-to guy at this point for uh, for uh, San Dimas, Cam. You can't blame him. I, I wonder if they gave him oxygen, though, after that 74-yard run, though. I don't know. <laughs> but he seems to have his legs under him. He had a nice gain there on first down. Clock continue to tick away. 145 and counting here in the third quarter. 
27-21. Six point lead for the Bearcats. We're gonna get the end around to Roland. Rollins with the ball, had a gain, is gonna be short of the first down. We're gonna have a player, St. Nemus player down on the sideline over there. Can't quite make out who the player is, but. There you go, 50-50 tickets. Thanks, Reggie. You're my man, Reg. If I win, Dinner uh, on you tonight. Split it with you. Bob, if you win. You won't see me for a few weeks. <laughs> Our cameraman Richard McManus has a son, Dominic, that he could right. I'm gonna give those to Rich. Yay! Get him in here. Rich McManus, he was being pestered by insects earlier in the game. It now seems like they've been letting him leaving him alone. So no, clock stopped at 1.15. So Rollins is still down on the sideline. They're going to get him up. Cam, real quick, I'd like to mention, folks, stay with us for post-game coverage. Down on the field, we'll be awarding, in traditional fashion, the Bobcat Cedar player of the game to be selected by us three and uh, try to talk to the winning coach as well. Third and two. Samples completes a pass. Again, he throws it a little bit behind David Flake, but Flake doing a good job of turning back and catching the football. Look at the replay here, Bobcat. It looks like Sanim has really taken over the momentum right here. Nice catch by that going back to get it. Plus, he had looks like he had a defender wrapped around his waist. Flake in motion. The pitch is to Curry over the right side. He cuts up. Gray in on the tackle. You do a little head hunting there, old Pablo. See a replay here coming up. Wow, some hard hitting there. Nice tackle. So with the touchdown, the Saints could take the lead, Cam. Actually, they'll tie it up with a PAT. Take the lead and uh, be in the driver's seat. Richards right at the middle, not a whole lot there. So that'll bring up a big third down. Players slow to get up there on the field. That's gonna do it for three quarters of play. 27-21, but the Saints with great field position to start the fourth quarter. So fourth quarter, and we have quite a football game. The Saints trailing by six. I think much to the surprise of us and most of the people here tonight, it's a very close football game. The score by quarters, Cam, you know, we talk about how important uh, second half adjustments are, and it comes down to the coaching for the second part of the game because they've already seen, you know, what they have to adjust to. Well, right now, score by quarters, it was 8-0 after one quarter play. Benita going just by the score in the second quarter, 16-14. It was close. Sandivas kept it. They were down by just two. Now this quarter, Sandivas outscores Benita 7-3. Pablo Garay uh, with a field goal. And then, of course, uh, our man, Mr. Ryan Richard with a huge 75-yard touchdown run to keep this thing close. Now, the Saints, you got to like where they're at if you're their coach. Down at the 17-yard line, it's going to be third and seven. This is a crucial down, Cameron. Well, you know, another thing to note, we'll, we'll watch this play. Flake in motion. Fake the quick pass. He looks down to Flake. He's wide open. And makes the catch and dives into the end zone. It's a touchdown. And that is a touchdown. He collided with the uh, defender. Kept his balance, made a great catch there. So nice pass by Samples, great reception by Flake. Get a light go out or something. There's a look at the replay, Bobby just kind of lofted it up in the. Yeah, nice catch because it looks like he got tripped up and then it looked like he got hit a little early and still came down with the ball and got it in the end zone. 
Well, heads up to Flag for getting that extra reach in there, Cam. That's something that uh, they teach at all levels. And like I said, we had a light go out simultaneously. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, they miss it. It's a tie ball game. Yeah, some lights did go out in the stadium. It didn't throw the players off, but Cam, it's kind of thrown you to it into a loop. <laughs> yeah, that it is. But So we have a new ball game here. It's 27-27 with the unfortunate miss of the PAT. You know what it is, Cam? The, the field directly behind us was lit up, and that's the lights that went off, I believe. You're looking, you're pointing at a, a tower. There's been a short in the circuit. Something about lighting at the high school level, man. Yeah. But like what I was going to say before they scored there is that, is that uh, San Dimas, you know, these are preseason games. So this is a great way for San Dimas to end their preseason and go into regular season play, you know, playing tough like they are. And I win or lose, I mean, this really has to help their confidence quite a bit. 14-yard TD pass. Cementing that drive and getting the Saints to tie it up here at 27, 27 to start the fourth quarter. So the Saints players got to have a little extra wind in their sails knowing it's a brand new ball game with one full quarter left. Again, a short kick. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. Guaya with the return. And that was uh, Jason Kilty in on the stop. David Flagg helped finish him off. So number 35, Kilty with the stop, and then Flagg doing the finish there. There's a shot of the coach on the sideline. There's a look at the replay. Wild. Oh, he's upended. And again, number 35 is Kilty. So Benitez got the start of their own 21-yard line, 22-yard line, and have to have a big field in front of them. San Dimas defense is fired up. They're showing blitz. First and 10 from the 22. They don't come. Goes back. And throws it right through the hands of Mike McDonald. Passes a little bit high. And that was a bullet, Cam. Defense! 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 Curtis Gold showing exactly the type of arm that he possesses. A little bit too hot to handle for his receiver. And again, a real close game here on the smudge pot. The crowd on our side, on the San Dimas side, has gotten back into it with that touchdown. Benita looking at second and 10 from their own 22. Different quarterback back to throw. He has, looks like Cole Sanders downfield. That was uh, Curtis Gold. Sorry, I called different quarterback, same quarterback. Curtis Gold back to pass. Had a receiver. And here we look at the replay. Bob, what do you well, see? Well, Gold's had time all day. And I think right here, Sanders just kind of pulls away from the ball and doesn't really look it in all the way. So pass was on the money there, number 15, Cole Sanders. Is it me or they did not move the ball up? Called incomplete. What, what's going on? Incomplete pass. Third and 10. From their own 22. Gold looks downfield. He's got his receiver. He's got a beat, but he overthrows him. That's the third time tonight, Cam, we've seen that scenario play out where Curtis Gold's receivers have actually beaten their man well downfield, and he just kind of overshoots him. That's right. That was Mike Bentz, who already has a TD reception tonight. Like he said, he had a, he had you know five steps on the defender. And what you're talking about is a 76-yard touchdown reception to open the game and get Bonita on the scoreboard first to open things up. But you know, good defense by the Saints. They're gonna Curry's gonna go back to return the punt, and they're gonna end up a pretty good field position here with uh, not a whole, how much time left in the fourth 11:30. 11:30 here in the fourth. San Dimas Saints sideline coming to life as well as the home bleachers. That's where we're at. Low snap. The ball's fumbled. Sanders is going to try to run it for the first down. And no doing. Wow. Huge, huge mistake by Benita on the low snap. San Dimas is in field goal range. Maybe. 
I don't know if Sample Spy has a leg, but they have first down on the 23 yard line of Benita. If they want a chance to win this game, they got it now, guys. A lot of time left, but Camp Sandy Miss uh, home bleachers coming to life here. They're really enjoying themselves in the opportunity here that Sandy Miss has this late in the game. So right now the football guards are shining brightly on the San Dimas Saints. Curry over the right side, he's got room. He makes a cut. He's gonna be down at about the one yard line. Roy Curry with a huge gain there. And I continue to see the Saints not allowing the bow high defense to get set up. They get right down in the line of scrimmage and immediately start the play. Okay, Sample gets under quarterback. He gives it to Richard up the middle. He tries to bounce it outside. Again, I love play action. I'd love to see Fager to Richard keep it and just run around the end. If I, but uh, we'll see. Especially if you're kind of unbalanced, you got a lot more running room on one side. More times than not, that's a successful play, Cam, and I like your train of thought there. Here's a replay on that big run. Yeah, I think that was Rollins downfield, maybe blocking. I couldn't quite make it. You know that, who that was? That was actually John Joe, I believe, leading downfield with the block on that. So Saints try it again. They don't get in. And it's going to be third down. Clock continue to tick away. 10.30 left in tonight's contest. Fourth quarter action. We're tied up at 27-27. Smudge Pot 2005. 34th meeting between this these two teams. That was the last play. That was a broken play. Sample's trying to make something out of it. This time, Richard over the right side is going to get in. Ryan Richard with his third touchdown on the night, Cam, making it happen for the San Dimas Saints. Here's a look at the replay. What do you see, Bob? Well, it's just Ryan Richard again, uh, just plugging away up the middle. He saw him get stopped earlier and then just tried again. Your offensive lineman came through and made him a hole and got in. Okay, you know, this time they kind of went between the guard and tackle on the right side as opposed to trying to jam it up there between the center and guard. They got big Phil Ramirez on that right side. And so the, the kick is blocked is again. No good. San Dimas defense is going to have to step up here, leading by six. And first and foremost, their special team is going to have to stop this kick return of, uh, of a while. Well, right now, if you're Coach Bill Zernico, you have to like the feeling and the momentum that he's ridden here into the second half. With 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, San Dimas seems to be riding the tide of energy. Just uh, They scored twice here in the fourth quarter. I'll tell you what, though, those missed PATs really kill you because they would be up by more than a touchdown. They'd be up by eight and forced Benita to go for two had they converted on those two PATs. The slogan on the t-shirts that were made here at San Dimas High School was make it happen. Make it happen, and that's what they seem to be doing right now. Plenty of time left though, Kim. San Dimas would like nothing else than to hand the Benita Bearcats their first loss of this year, preseason. Low kick, it's gonna go out of bounds. Oh, that was ugly. <laughs> Let me get a shot of Samples. They may need to go to the volleyball team. Now that he gets Samples, he's doing a great job at quarterback, but didn't you say what, what team pulled oh, the girl Charter up? Oak. Yeah, there Natalie Bailey over at Charter Oak. Yeah. Uh, the middle blocker for the girls Charger volleyball team. She also does double duty. Goes from practice to practice and kicks for uh, Coach Lou Ferrar. <laughs> Charter Oak over there. I thought she worked out at King's Gym, Cam. What's her name? Natalie Bailey. But I saw her in there a couple times. That's where You're she got You're not working with her, are you? Not hey, hey. On the down low. The it's not kick. about me, Reg. <laughs> An infraction against the Saints. Going to move the ball. So I would say that people are getting their money's worth tonight here at the Smudge Pot. Yeah. 
Great job there, number 73 for San Dimas. And that is Kyle Tilbury. Doing a great job. And let's check out Kyle, Kyle here. He is 5'7", 210. That's, That's a, a big, fire plug. Big boy, yes. Similar in size to Richard McManus, the CEO of Glendora Access Television. Compact, yet powerful. There he is. He wants some more of that. Leading candidate, I already got my uh, vote for the Bobcat Cedar play of the game. Should the game end with the score right now? Chavez in a quarterback. And the de Saints defense swarming on him, number 66. And number 90, that is Ryan Buford, as well as Kyle Cunningham. Here's the, the replay. Sack. Bob, what do you see? Well, the San Dimas uh, defense is really coming alive now. We see right after that Ryan Richard run for that touchdown, it seems like both sides of the ball at San Dimas really just came alive. They got the crowd back into it, and now they got all the momentum on their side. You know, Chavez is still in the game, so I don't know if we have possibly have an injury to gold or what's going on, but in the back of quarterback, Chavez, who shows it very capable to run this team, is third, uh, third and 16 for Benita from their own 29. Shovel pass up the middle. He's got some room. He, that's Garay. He avoids one tackler and is taken down uh, uh, by Tilbury. Let's we'll see a replay here. There it looks like quick forward pass before the receiver was taken down. Well short of the first down. Now it's going to be about fourth and ten. And Benita going to do the wise thing and punt. And a nice punt. It will be returned. Taking it for a nice return before being run out of bounds is number five for San Dimas. Curry. Yeah, Roy Curry once again. So Saints now gonna probably play some conservative football right now. Cam, there's 750 left in the game. Will coach Bill Zernico run the ball? Eat up the clock and uh, perhaps try to escape with the victory or put in the end zone one last time. First and 10 from the 47, Bearcats 47. Benita swarms that time on defense. Led by number 30, Cody Borquez. We know the Borquez name. I believe he had some brothers playing there we've covered the last few years. You know, the question here in the stands was uh, the strength of the schedule by Benita, but one thing to note is that they did beat South El Monte, who we saw handle San Dimas quite easily earlier in the season. So, uh, so you know, I, I don't know about their teams they played against, but certainly South El Monte was a good ball team, and, and uh, Benita beat them. So hats off to San Dimas here tonight to be playing so well to step up their game. So end around, number 31 with the ball. He'll gain a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, Borzileri. Here we'll see the replay. And San Dimas certainly would be happy, Reg, to run the football here and eat as much clock up as they can. 640 and ticking. And Cam, you talked about South El Monte. The San Dimas Saints lost 49 to 19 in week number one. Benita, on the other hand, beat South El Monte 24-14. So a flag on the play, pass complete to Jonathan Joe. You know, another thing about this game too, Cam, is uh, I read in the newspaper that a lot of San Dimas side, the San Dimas side was saying, you know, they may be 0-4, and, and they may be 0-9 or 1-9, but if they beat Benita and win that smudge pot, that, they consider that yeah. somewhat of a successful season. Well, you know, you're right in these games. Like, I, I, one year I was playing at Cal, we were 1-10, you know. And I, it comes down to the end of the year. I, you know, it's a miserable year, but you forget everything on those days. And, and you're it, you know, talking about the Axe game. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's bragging rights. And if there's one game that you want to win, that's the one. you got to tell us about some of those hits you put on John Elway <laughs> these days, Cam. 
Curry with the ball. Third and 19. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. Again, Bob, here's the replay. Kind of a trick play there. Yeah, I mean, Curry, you want him to kind of sweep to the outside, but you also don't want him to go out of bounds because you know he's really not going to pick up that first down. So it looks like San Diego is just going to try to play a little field position, try to pin this ball inside the 10. Looks like so the Saints on fourth and nine cam are going to be punting. Again, I'd just like to mention that uh, tonight in week number five, Charter Oaks at Claremont, Damien's at St. John Bosco, Arcadia's at Glendora at Bonita High School, Lutheran is at Upland Christian, Laverne Lutheran having a night game here for once. Usually play their games on Saturdays. Fourth and nine from the 46. High snap. <clears throat> Samples gets it off. Probably his best punt of the night. The ball go uh, be down at the 20-yard line. So 5.08, guys, to go here in the game. 80 yards of field in front of Bonita. Let's we'll see what happens. It's pretty exciting. They got plenty of time. You know, if you're Curtis Gold, we'll see if he's back in the game here. Um, nope. This is a test. This is a gut check. It doesn't look like Curtis Gold is back in the game. So Chavez, the backup junior quarterback, is going to be put in the, in the spotlight here to try to rally his team and get the win. First and 10, ball spotted at the Saints. At the Benita High, their own 21-yard line. He'll take the handoff. He's back to pass. He's got some pressure. Now he's got open field in front of him. Flag is giving him a run. Eventually he's forced out of bounds. That's a nice about 24-yard pickup there. And Cam, he had a wide open field. I mean, well, like we said earlier, you know, San Dimas is really motivated. They're flying up the field. But when you do that, you do, you know, you leave yourself a little bit vulnerable for these types of things, these types of games. Benita trailing by six. A, a touchdown ties it. The PAT wins it. Granted that there's, you know, plenty, not any time left in the game, but uh, under five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Week number five, high school football action, 34th annual Smudge Pot Extravaganza. This time the ball is pitched over the left side. That is number six, Perez, picking his way through the San Dimas defense and gaining about seven yards. So second and two, you see this Saint defense can respond to the challenge. This is a great uh, down situation for the offense. Kind of a free down, if you will. Oh, and there might be a sack. Coming up with another big play is number 73, <coughs> Kyle Tobury. And he had all jersey there, but he didn't let go, Cam. And Showing great hand strength. That's not that easy. That's a good job by Tilbury. Allowed one of his teammates to come over and assist him in taking down the quarterback. There you see. Number 56, and what a hit. Nice play there. That was number 56 of the Saints. Chad Macy. 6'1", 240. That's a two-yard loss, so bring up third and four. Six, four two. That's a big boy, yeah. 330 left here and counting. 46-yard line of San Dimas. Bonita has the ball at. Pass is not complete, intended for number 12, McDonald. Stops the clock at 327. So Bob, if you're uh, Coach Eric Podley right now, do you eat the clock up? Do you, do you run the ball more? Oh. Well, uh, actually, right now with fourth and four, what do you do? Well, the offensive line is giving your quarterback plenty of time all day. You just want him to kind of settle there and not not hurry his pass. You, you got, even though it looks like right now they're going to punt it away, but you know, and I disagree with that. I, I personally, I go for it on fourth and four. What was you guys? I mean, I go for it. You got 3:27 left in the game. 
Chad Nemes has been moving the ball. And a nice punt it is. Nemus, uh, you know, I don't know about that there. Uh, Roy Curry had a chance to return it, Cam. He had plenty of time, and he just kind of watched it now. San Dimas. Yeah, maybe they said to him, maybe they said that, you know, they're afraid of him fumbling. They say, if you don't feel like you can get to it and make a good reception, let it go. Maybe they thought it was going to go into the end zone. But, I, you know what, I, I don't know. I just, I, I would go for it in that series. We'll see what happens here, but. On the other hand, though, how much confidence does Coach Podley have in his defensive line, and now he's going to put them to the test? No, you're right. You know, they have a big field, so if the defense does a good job, they're going to be in pretty good field position. So we'll see what happens. San Dimas can grind it out. If, you know, San Dimas really needs to get themselves a first down here and, and uh, choose some take some time off the clock. But it's always tough when you're operating in your own end zone. You're always afraid, you know, of giving up a safety. So. It, Kind of tightens guys up a little bit. You got to tighten your splits, and it's just kind of hard to get out of there, especially you know if you don't have a super effective uh, passing game. So it's always nice to throw it out of there and gain six, seven yards on a little out pattern or something. There's a look at the San Dimas High School offensive line and quarterback. First I and ten. There we go. Now they got it out of there. Curry with a nice game. Folks, stay with us, because at the conclusion of this contest, we'll make our way down to the field and talk to some of the San Dimas Saints and find, oh, should they pull out the victory? With plenty of time left here. We'll talk to the winning team, check myself, and the Bobcat Cedar player of the game in traditional fashion. I'd like to thank our crew, Richard McManus from Glendora Access Television, Ken Pucci from KOS3, San Dimas Community Television, the kids from Baseball Talk, Philip and Josh. Philip and Christian Hartnett. Jim Patrick from KDL, Channel 10. Voices you hear all night are Bobcat Cedar, Cameron King, and I am Reginald Miller. There's a look at the Saint Band. We'd like to thank the San Dimas administration, Christine Kulo, the principal, as well as James Ellis, the ASB director, and the entire administration here at San Dimas for allowing us to come in here and bring you this the comfort of your own home, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this week's presentation. Probably high school game of the week, number five. Clock stopped at 2.34, first and 10, ball at the 14. Again, Saints wasting no time when they get down the line of scrimmage to hike the ball and get the play going. Now's when you need your big line to take over the game here. And <laughs> so they can just pound it out and chew the time off the clock. They have used up a minute so far. Again, they are only up by six points. So very important not to get the ball back to Benita. <laughs> Broken play, the, but Curry keeps the ball. He almost lost it, I think, in the backfield. <coughs> Samples ran into him. So not what the Saints wanted, but at least they didn't turn the ball over. They turned the ball over there on a broken play. They're in trouble, guys. That's going to bring up replay. third and about five or nine. I can't tell what that scoreboard missing some lights there. It's going to be says. nine. Third and nine. So we have a timeout on the field. So now, Cam, you've got to maybe uh, like the decision that Coach Podley made with his uh, fourth down play of not going with it. it possibly Benita's going to get the ball back here and have a chance to get it into the end zone. It couldn't be closer to this man we'll down see, the street. But you know, they still, once they get the punt, they're still going to be at midfield, so they have to make some big plays. There's a shot of the smudge pot right there, but me personally, again, I, I'd like to see them go for it. But, you know. Bob, I've seen so some of those here. around Cameron's property. I actually Those do have fun. one in the backyard. <laughs> My horses eat on it. I don't know what the heck they're thinking, but <laughs> they chew on the thing. Clock stopped at 140 left here in the game. I haven't heard the 50-50 numbers being announced. Have you guys, anybody heard the 50-50 numbers? Must have missed it. You know, they probably sold them to us after they called out the 50-50. That's how ridiculous we are. A huge third and eight. Oh, Samples fumbles the football. Man, I just said it. I just said it. The one thing they just cannot do 
is turn the ball over on exchange. And they did it. Well, now, Cam, the game is not over. They need a defense. Their defense has been shining here in the fourth quarter. They need to just step up in order to pull this thing out. Yep. Granted, it's an incredible field position, field position for Benita, but the game definitely not over. The clock stopped at 134. Well, somebody's going to be a hero at the end of the night. We'll see if they're in white or blue. Chavez, again, the junior quarterback taking over. Chavez looks downfield, there's a receiver. The Saints doing a good job driving him out of bounds. He was looking downfield to Benz, trying to find him there in the corner of the end zone. There's Chavez. So 129 to go in the game. They need a trails by six, they need this touchdown. Just Cameron Benita just managing three second half points. So hats off to the San Dimas defense. We'll see if they can keep it up here and get a stand here late in the game. Benita desperately trying seven. to maintain their undefeated record. Chavez looks down. He, no, he throws nobody. I throw a flag on the play. There's going to be a pass interference call down here on the defense. I was at 35, I think, uh, which is guilty. We'll probably see a replay of that. But that was a pretty easy call there by the officials, Bob. Yeah, you see the Benita receiver kind of turn inside and 35 just kind of put two arms around and held him. So penalties being a factor again. You know, you guys, I think this is the latest point in a game that I can remember that we have not had, have selected the player of the game. I know I got some front runners from both sides, but, uh, and it is going to be on San Dimas. Pell against San Dimas. Well, San Dimas just kind of shooting themselves in the foot here. Let's see if the defense can remain tough. They're doing a good job, except for that penalty, but the run defense is playing great. 123 to go in the game. Here's Everyone the replay. The Bobcat Cedar, what do you see? Well, the Benita receiver just kind of came, once again, quarterback's out all time, but he just kind of wrapped his arms around him and held him. Don't know if our cameras caught it like the umpires and officials saw it, but uh, nevertheless, penalty has been assessed. And uh, So folks here on the San Dimas side keep their fingers crossed, hoping their defense can hold up. Wow, Cam, and it looks like it's first and goal from the seven. Drama. Chavez has a receiver. Curry comes in, knocks it away. Great job by Curry to block that ball. Intended receiver again was Benz. Wow. Number 24, Mike Benz, the intended receiver. What a bullet down the middle. That is dangerous territory. Curry coming across there, and uh, Nosey broke that up. It's going to be second down. 117 left. Well, you didn't expect a game this good, huh, coming in. A 0-4 against 4-0 team. Smudge Pot 2004 doesn't get better than this, folks. No snap. Chavez looks back. Finds a receiver in the middle. And that is a touchdown. That's Cole Sanders. For the touchdown, it tied the game. Flag laying on the field there, disappointed at the defensive stand. 13-yard so, touchdown reception. So that's a tough blow there for San Dimas, basically giving the Bearcats the ball on the fumbled exchange. Tied at 33. Now this is the difference. Kicks have been important in this game. Let's see. They're going to go. Apparently, they're going to want to go for two. I don't know why they would, but. I think they might have just been Podley's uh, trying to throw Zernico off. Possibly. Um, who would have imagined this, though? Who would have imagined? Bob. 4-0 and OT <laughs> coming in to take on the 0-4 Saints. And it's tied 33 apiece with 1 minute and 12 seconds left. Bob, you saw this all along, didn't you? Yeah, I was talking to Cam's friend Abe before this game. 
you know, I, <laughs> I said it was going to be close. I said, don't worry about the record, Dave. Yeah. Even though it's 4 0 against 1 4, it's going to be a great game. And uh, it's turned <laughs> out to be exactly what I said. Baloney! Baloney! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, they will go for the PAT, of course. I can think of only a couple places I'd rather be at this point in time right now on Friday night. Second and seven. Pablo Gray. And Gray kicks it through. That's a lot of pressure on Gray. About giving the one point they need. However, there is some time on the clock. And it is the Spudge Pot game, guys. Mid-12 to go. Well, now it's going to be a huge gut check for the San Dimas Saint offense. From what you've seen tonight, are they capable of taking the ball down the field and putting it in the end zone with one minute and 12 seconds left? What do you guys think? Well, we saw Richards. It took him about a minute and 12 to make the field for another field earlier, but certainly they can do it. You know, and we see this, we've seen this every year. We'll see a receiver and kind of stands out. John Joe to me is 6'4". He's a super athletic. Well, I try to get in his hands and see what he can do with the football. Between he and Curry, they should be able to, you know, maybe make make an impact here. But make good, put it up there, make it go get it, and see what he can do. Again is deep and will be returned. They're going to hand the ball off to Curry, which they always seem to do. Curry has a lot of field in front of him. He's knocked out by the 32-yard line. Nice return, though, Cam. Yeah, so nice return by the Saints. Saints will have decent field position. And a minute and four to go in the game. Well, like I said earlier, anytime Curry doesn't get the kickoff, it's going to be given to him. He gets, and, you know, he fakes it. But they just want to see how Curry just touch as many touches and get him in the game. They're calling a timeout. Coach Zernico is upset. He's yelling at his receiver. Looks like he's yelling at John Joe. Coach could go out and talk to his guys, but certainly not happy that time with his offense. I don't think you want to use a timeout that way. With a minute four to go here. You know, generally teams have two minute offenses. I don't know uh, at the high school level how many teams really work on that. I know in college we worked on it every practice. Two minute offense, a lot of time it kind of loosens guys up and you really can move the ball pretty, pretty fast down the field. A lot of responsibility naturally goes to the quarterback in the two minute offense. What will San Dimas do here? Will they go to the air? Will they keep it on the ground, Cam? 104 showing on the clock left. We're going to have illegal procedure on the right tackle by San Dimas. Chad Macy moving there. Again, the Saints just kind of shoot themselves in the foot here toward the end of the game. Penalties have hampered them over the last few minutes. And stay with us, folks, as we'll make our way down to the field for post-game coverage at the conclusion of regulation here. They get a reverse. They didn't fool anybody that time. That's going to bring up second and about 15. Here's the replay, Bob. It looks like it just play wasn't meant to happen from the get-go. Yeah, it just looked like Benita's defense was just waiting for that play. What do you want to do? I'm saying, Neiman's got to throw for a first down. Stop They're going to the go for Joe. Put it up, and then he catches it. And that's what you talked about, Cam. Throw it up to your big, huge receiver and see what he can make happen. He came up big there. He's got great hands. He's on the basketball team, and they utilize him at just the right time. Yeah, he's the tallest guy out there on the field. Well, I get him the football. 35 seconds left here. Smudge Pot 34, San Dimas High School. Bonita Bearcats entered the game 4-0. They have the lead by just one point. San Dimas Saints, on the other hand, 0-4, and, and have had the uh, lead here in the second half and been in the driver's seat for the most part, but Bonita did not fold. 
They did not waver, and they got in the end zone to have the one-point lead they do right now, 34-33. Cam? Well, you know what? Well, I was going to say, what well, hurts San Dimas is, is Eric Samples just doesn't have the arm strength to get down the field for John Joe to take off and use his speed. So that 20-yard gain is about, I think, what they can expect to get. They're just going to have to hopefully can break a tackle, make a run, or, you know, maybe somebody can, they can put together maybe another couple, two or three plays here. But this is where your arm strength is, a, a, unfortunately, a disadvantage here for uh, the Saints. Curry with the ball. He's going to have a first down. Clock ticks down to 28 seconds here to go in the game. And you know, you talk about Sample's arm. He is the kicker. If they get within a field goal range, it could come down to how not how much power he has in his arm, but how much power he has in his leg. It could. And after missing two, two PATs, well, that's a nail biter, buddy. Woo! Doesn't get better than this, folks. First and 10 from the 45 of Benita. 26 ticks left. Samples downs the ball. And again, this is a spot where they'd like to have that timeout back. You guys, I'm going to make a beeline down to the field as soon as the uh, regulation expires. And uh, we'll have by then selected the Bobcat Cedar player of the game. This is Smudge Pot 34. Last time, uh, you know, Benita's had the smudge pot in uh, eight of the last nine years. And they're looking to get it back. They do the reverse. Year. This time Joe's going to pass the ball. And it's going to be intercepted. Oh, boy. So Benita could have ended that game. And the two receivers, uh, two check that defensive backs go up and kind of cause each other to drop it. Uh, and you know what? I don't know what they saw in practice, but it, it looked like a receiver trying to throw a football there, not a quarterback. So uh, that's scary. And they're really lucky they dodged a bullet that that ball wasn't picked off because two guys are right there. Yeah, John Joe throwing up a duck, a dead duck, it looked like. 17 seconds left, though. It's going to be second down. Check that. Third down and 10. Curry up the middle. He's got some room. And, and I believe he's got down. the first down, Cam. They got to hurry up to the ball, get up to the ball and down it because as soon as the, the uh, chains get set, they're going to start the clock up. So they have to down the football again. Chains are set. Eight ticks, guys. Eight ticks. Doesn't ball's get much closer than this much. Pot 34. You know, if the ball's on about the 32 yard line. Bob Cedar, how's this game going to play out? I don't know. I think with eight seconds, all you can really do is throw maybe 10 yards out, out to the sideline and maybe get out of bounds. But it looks like a little bit too far for a field goal right now. You know, Cam, you got to give a hats off to the San Dimas offense here. You had a resurgent second half and turned this game around. They had the lead for the, a lot of the second half. And now it's them with less than a minute and uh, minute and change that they marched down the field here. Eight seconds left in the fourth quarter here. And now they're. Uh, Knocking down the Bearcats' door. They're down by just one point. Field goal wins it or a point. The flag on the play. I'm going to guess flag it's going to be a delay game. That's going to go against San Dimas. That could be crucial, too. Yeah, like I can say, you know, it's just it, two missed PATs and a turnover. Just hard to overcome. San Dimas could very easily uh, win this football game. Curry's going to be wide open. He's got his eye on the end zone. Time's running out. The That's going to do over. it. Final score here tonight, 34-33. The Bonita Bearcats hang on, but not before a scare by the San Dimas Saints. So you know, what an effort, Cam, by, uh, yeah. by the Saints. Great effort. You know, you hate to see anybody lose a game. It's just unfortunate for the San Dimas fans. They deserve to win tonight. They're having a rough season so far, but you know, they kind of gave the game away there on a few plays. But you know, on, on the bright side of things, they did to play a great game against an undefeated team. The league has not started, so a whole new season. The second half starts up now next week for San Dimas. And um, I don't know, I'll look up here at who they have. Any thoughts there, Bob? Just a, a great game by San Dimas and Ryan Richard. You know, he played great with that huge run. He brought the crowd back into it. And Saints never gave up. Played a great game.
They the next week, uh, San Dimas will play uh, Northview. And it's a, again, it is a league game, and it uh, will be uh, here at San Dimas. So there you have it. What a ball game, folks. This could possibly have been the game of the year so far. There's We're going to make our way pot. down to the field cam, and I'm going to try to catch up with player of the game, Cole Sanders from Bonita High School, as well as head coach Eric Podley. Stay with us, folks, for post-game coverage coming right up. All right, we're standing by here with player of the game, Cole Sanders, the Smudge Pot, and Coach Podley. Coach, first of all, I'd like to talk about the second half. They really came out and were kind of controlling things. What were some of the problems that you guys were faced with? Uh, we, they, we had a tough time stopping them all night. And, uh, you know, we, we tried to change our game plan a little bit and have to run a little more to try to keep them off the field. And that really went, didn't play to our strong suit, and we weren't stopping them anyway. So. Cole with, the, Cole with the uh, 5-0 and record now. You guys came in here at 4-0. and San Ibis was 0-4, but by the looks of things and the energy out on the field, man, it just seemed like you guys were pretty even across the board. What were your thoughts coming into the game? Smudge ball game. The record doesn't matter. Everybody's going balls to the walls, and everybody wants this. This game, records don't matter. Everybody wants to win. So the best players play, and whoever makes the least mistakes wins. Coach, eight of the nine last year's a smudge pot's been in your possession. You guys take it back again. What does this game mean to the program? You're in your seventh year at Benita High. Uh, sixth year in Benita High, sixth and uh, yeah, it means a lot. You know, it means I get to come back and coach again next year, which is, of course, the most important thing. And uh, it's important to our community. It's a source of pride. People come in off the street to look at it. You know, they people, older people come in and bring their grandkids to show them the smudge pot. So it really means a lot to our community, and uh, we're. We feel fortunate to be able to keep it tonight. All right, Cole, and I got to ask you about your quarterback. He went down. How's he doing? I think he's all right. His shoulder's sore, but he'll be back next week. All right, Cole Sanders, two touchdown reception. Coach, before I go, I know that Coach Zernico is a protege of yours. He coached with you over at Northview. Were there any tricks that he used against you tonight? And what was it like to play against him in a game with this magnitude? Uh, obviously, he presented a very serious challenge to us. And, uh, yeah, they did an outstanding job. We could not stop him. And, uh, you know, we feel we're fortunate to get out of here. They did an outstanding job tonight, and I think they can look forward to some really exciting games in the Valley Vista League. All right, Cole Sanders, there's your certificate player of the game tonight. You earned that. Great job. Bonita High School goes to 5-0. and They open up. The league is still two games away. You guys play Walnut? Walnut next week, and then we open league against Charter Oak. Okay. Final score tonight from San Dimas High School, 34-33. Bonita High pulls it off for KOS 3, Glendora Access Television, and the Adelphia Channel 10. I am Reginald Miller, Camera King Bob Katz here. Thanks for tonight. Good night, everybody.